Good evening, brothers, sisters, and listeners. I hope you're having a splendid evening, but sadly, I'm here today to absolutely decimate that because, yes, you may have been smiling, you may have been happy, and honestly, for once in your week, you know, you might have been actually feeling a little bit good and a little bit happy. But sadly, given the nature of the things that you're going to discover in this video, I, happiness isn't a question or a thing that's ever going to come into your life again. And look, maybe you weren't happy, and honestly, that's probably for the best given today's stop. Actually, no, be happy, be happy. Don't get me wrong, happiness is good, but because of what we're speaking about, today, it's not going to really be an option. Because on this channel, sometimes we like to explore icebergs. And what is an iceberg? Well, it's a big pit of information where a certain topic needs explanation. I, that's a horrible, hor that's a horrible way to explain what an iceberg is. The iceberg is the thing that hit the Titanic. And it wasn't a good time. But people on the internet, because we are absolutely mental, have kind of made this thing where an iceberg kind of represents information. Information which you may not know at the bottom of the iceberg, but at the very top are common things. And this can be applied to a lot of specific things, such as Star Wars, um, the MCU, things which all your family and friends love. But on this channel, we have done one iceberg video so far, and that was indeed the Amberlynn Reed iceberg. That, that was a video where honestly it was pretty positive. It was pretty fun. We went through some wacky, quirky things, and honestly, yes, there were some dark and scary things, but I think we came out of it at the ending feeling good, feeling happy. But today, as I said, that's not happening. Because this, my friends, is the Onision Iceberg. Explained. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure at this point of time you absolutely know who Onision is, and if you don't, well, <laughs> just just click off the video. Like, honestly, you don't need to be introduced to this, this, this awful housecape. Please do yourself a favor. Just, just get out. Get out! I don't want you here! Alright, alright, everyone else here still? Okay, well, Anision, as you can see, is the bloke on the board right now. You've got Chris Hansen, the man, the myth, the onion? Well, yeah, that's Anision, the man who was originally discovered in 2009-2010 as the banana man. You know, your friend went over with his algae cookie. He said, have you seen this man on YouTube? And 10 years later, there's an FBI investigation and a Chris Hansen investigation. Given that sheer amount of context, you can probably understand why I'm saying that you're not going to be happy after the end of this video, because there is just an absolute mess here. From start to finish, it is honestly just disturbing and disgusting. And I am going to actually put a warning. I didn't even write it down, but thinking about it, I probably should in saying trigger warning for pretty much every single triggering piece of information that you could possibly stumble upon. I know that's pretty vague, but honestly, there is just so, so much going on here. So ladies and gentlemen, grab some snacks, grab a bottle of water, which has most likely contributed to devastating sea turtles, and just sit down and relax. Because yes, this is the Onision Iceberg. This is going to be a big deep dive. But before we do that, I just want to say, could you bloom and subscribe to the YouTube channel? Because if you don't, I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. And to be fair, if you do, I'm still going to do that. And you are too. I know you're a sad individual for the most part, most of you. Maybe some of you are happy. But subscribing might make you happier, and if you aren't happy, subscribing will make you still sad, but at least you have some content to watch every now and again. So, uh, yeah, that's the first request. And the second thing is, uh, could you just listen to this ad read? Because, yes, this video has actually been sponsored and was brought to you by CyberGhost VPN. Because, yes, fellas, today we are going to be speaking about the true pits of internet hell, the worst, most darkest, the crepest, just terrifying places. And whilst making this video, I genuinely felt lonely, vulnerable, and most honestly, unprotected. Because ladies and gentlemen, when making this video, I went to some places on the internet that no man should have to venture to, and honestly, I was one click away from some terrible piece of malware ruining my day. And it's not just with me, data breaches and malware could be one click away from you and make you lose your important data, or even much worse. And that is why CyberGhost VPN is here to save the day, and not only protect me, ladies and gentlemen, but also to protect you. So yes, fellas, step up your cybersecurity without having those dodgy, slow internet speeds, but also take advantage of the fact that you can take those speeds and apply the fact that CyberGhost VPN actually allows you to have access to region block streaming services such as Netflix US whilst you're in the UK, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, and many more. And HBO Max is a big one because for some reason we don't have that in the UK yet. And CyberGhost also has amazing security features such as a no-logs policy, so not even CyberGhost can see what you're up to. And also, it's available on all your favorite devices, such as 
Windows, Mac, Android, and many more out there, ladies and gentlemen. And with 38 million users and amazing reviews on Trustpilot, and the fact that one subscription can be used by seven different devices, so all the family can get around and use CyberGhost VPN, you also get a 45-day money-back guarantee and also 24/7 customer service. So, ladies and gentlemen, CyberGhost VPN for two dollars and three cents per month, plus four months free and one subscription that can be used by seven devices, so you can share it with all your your family and friends. This is a deal that CyberGhost VPN are kindly offering to only the subscribers on this channel, and it will just keep you having your data protected. So, click on the link in the description to get this amazing offer only available to my subscribers. Honestly, it's wonderful. It's totally risk-free, and also you're helping me out. You're helping yourself out by keeping yourself protected. So, yes, thank you so much to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video, and uh, yeah, back to the deep pit of hell that is the internet. Okay, fellas, now, like all icebergs, we have to establish some rules. Rule number one, please do not hit a big ship, which is carrying lots of rich people. Don't do that. Secondly, though, in an iceberg in a YouTube video like this, there have to be uh, things to make us understand what's actually going on here. And as you can see, with this iceberg, there is a bit of a problem where there's some censoring, some words are missing, and that's mainly due to the fact that, yes, YouTube's algorithm doesn't like big old naughty words. Naughty words such as the thing that rhymes with brooming. What does brooming mean? Nothing. It's a fake word which I just created, and if you thought it was a word... I'm thinking, is it a word? I don't think it's a word, but if you thought it was a word, you're silly, and if it is a word, I'm oh. silly. I'm sorry, but I'm editing this, and I've just realised, look at me, but I'm an idiot. I look, at, look at the state of it. Brooming is obviously a word, it's where you sweep things up and stuff. Honestly, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I have a script, would you believe it or not, but no, it, brooming's obviously a word. Ignore what I said, I apologise for insulting you, and if you want to unsubscribe, I, I totally understand. Sorry, let's get back into the rules. The supposed rules, he doesn't even know what he's saying. But what rhymes with brooming? Now take that word that it rhymes with, which is in your mind right now, and apply that to Anision. Because yes, this man has been accused of this thing on multiple occasions, and I'm gonna have to put, basically, a spin on a lot of things. So fellas, what I'm trying to say here is rule number one is pretty much I'm gonna be changing sentences, words, and phrases that are on this iceberg to pretty much not get age restricted. Because you know, I would like this video to actually get viewed by more than four people, and if it has at this point of time, please comment beans down below, but then we move on to rule number two. As you can see throughout this video, I've been placing onions onto this man's face, and you may be thinking, has this guy got a weird thing going on for onions? Maybe. But that's not the main reason. The main reason I'm not showing this man's face is Onision does have a history of copyright claiming people, which does mean he takes all of the money that you make on your videos for himself. And I don't really want to contribute to this man recovering from his bankruptcy. So yeah, throughout this video, you're going to see a lot of onions and probably not much of this man's face. And if I do show his face, just don't comment below. I don't need your smart asses in my comment section. But rule number three is the topics in this situation. I'm not going to go through everything in absolute graphic detail. Pretty much there are a lot of things on this iceberg. As you can see, there's a lot on the board. Well, you, it doesn't look like a lot because it's in pictures, and honestly, the board's the big thing here. But trust me, fellas, there's a lot going on here. Chris Hansen is staring you dead in the eyes right now, and so is Shadow the Hedgehog. There's a lot, and they're upset that they have to sit through all of this, even though Chris has blocked me on Twitter for some... I don't know why he's done that, but he has. Okay, pretty much what I'm saying here is rule number three is I'm not going to go through everything in detail because I would be here for a millennia if I had to go through everything in specific deets. If you want to know the deets on certain situations in grander scale, go watch somebody's YouTube video about those specific topics. But yeah, that is the three rules and they are staring you in the face right now. And with that, I think we can get into the thing which is going to give you some form of diagnosis. And I don't know which one, but it's going to be one of them. So yes, my friends, like all good things, we begin with the tip. Not really quite sure what I mean by that, but yes, the tip of the iceberg. This is pretty much the most common things that you would know to do with Onision. If you know the guy, you most likely know this information. We've got Chris Hansen, we've got meltdowns, we've got investigations. It's all here in the tip of the iceberg. I'm pointing at it, but you can't actually read that from here. But trust me, uh, as you can see, there's a lot going on here. And of course, we start off with a very, very popular topic when it comes to Onision, and that is the mistreatment and alleged illegal activity with Sarah. Now, Sarah is a massive part of the Onision story. She is one of the brave individuals that originally came out and spoke out against Onision and his horrific, again, alleged illegal activity when it came to how he interacted with this person. But yes, who actually is Sarah? Well, apparently, 
apparently Sarah was originally a fan of Onision, but also Onision's spouse Kai. Pretty much, as I said, they liked the content, they were a fan, and it kind of led to Onision, like it seems in a common pattern in this video, uh, taking advantage of that dynamic, taking advantage of it to a point of where he used this person for, which well, just terrible things. Over the years, Sarah has told a story about how she was underage and Onision was in his mid-twenties when they first interacted with each other, and just in general, the horrific nature behind some of the things that Onision allegedly did when it came to Sarah. There are so many videos out there explaining the sheer manner of what went on in this, I I'd say relationship, but I think that's just a really bad way to describe it, because that would imply that, I mean, there wasn't something illegal going on here. I mean, in my opinion, it's absolutely horrific, and honestly, it only just began begins there when it comes to Sarah, because then we move on to the second part of this tip of the iceberg, and that, of course, is Kai. Kai is the spouse of Onision, and just like Sarah, Kai was a massive fan of the Onion Boy, and I know that might be quite hard to imagine that, <laughs> yes, this man at one point of time had fans, but uh, in particular, Kai was a massive fan when it came to Gregory. In fact, Kai was tweeting things back in the day when they were 17, such as, I like when Onision is single, because it allows me to daydream that I could actually have a chance. Well, well, Kai didn't need to, 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 to daydream because obviously their dreams became a sick, sick reality because now they have been married for eight years. But I do recommend uh, adding into the context there that when they first met, Kai was a teenager and Onision was 26. So strangely enough, Onision has actually denied the allegation that he... I, I, I hate to say it like this, but broomed, uh, broomed Kai. I know, I, it sounds ridiculous to say, but come on, the YouTube TOS these days is just ridiculous. Basically, yeah, he's gone onto Twitter making tweets such as, Fun fact, the last person I ever said anything romantic to who wasn't an adult. So, I mean, he's implying here that there was more than one person in, in, in the phrasing, the last person, but he's also admitting to these things. But he says, yeah, the last person who he said something romantic to who wasn't an adult was the person he's been married to for eight years. My 26-year-old husband. I mean, what a way to admit, <laughs> like, all of the things you've been accused of. Like, Greg, something happening eight years ago doesn't mean that you haven't done it and doesn't mean it's any less of a crime. Jimmy Savile may be dead and, you know, six feet under in the mud, but those crimes he committed in the 1970s were still crimes. But yeah, this relationship or marriage was well, just a weird thing between Kai and Onision isn't just terrible for the fact that it was built on possible illegal activities, but it's also sick because Kai has seemingly become Onision's partner in crime. As I mentioned previously, Kai and Sarah had activities out there, which I think can only be kind of explained instantly by this thumbnail and title right here, saying Onision's spouse is a broomer. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that thumbnail and title definitely does not lie because Kai's, I guess, past is well documented just as Onision's is. As you can see, there are plenty of interactions here between Sarah and Kai alone of where not only is Kai in their 20s, but Sarah is also a teenager at this point of time. But you can kind of see there is a pattern here. Not only is there an enabling of Onision's behavior, but there is arguably worse behavior than Onision himself committed. And the thing is, when it comes to these patterns of behavior, which you can kind of notice between Gregory and, and younger people, or Kai and younger people, it kind of just seems that every single time there is an interaction between Kai and Onision and another human being, it's just just like always, absolutely horrific. There is never a time these people have interacted with anybody on the internet where it hasn't just turned into even an illegal activity or just a complete and utter dunce to fire. And that's when we move on to the next part of the tip of the iceberg. And that, of course, is Onision's original partner, Sky. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about horrific treatment from Onision, Sky is somebody who... It... <sighs> It's just another case of this man being truly the worst of the worst. And ladies and gentlemen, this may be your first introduction to Sky, well, as you may think, but actually, no. If you have heard the, uh, the wild famous song, uh, where Onision dances around in a banana costume, you have definitely actually witnessed Sky. Because at the very beginning of this video, Onision turns to somebody and says, Sky, I'm a banana. And yeah, that is Sky, and honestly, that's probably, like, the only positive thing that I can say about Sky and Onision's history, because, yeah, 
obviously, as you can tell, it goes down a route of, once again, Onision treating somebody absolutely horribly. Because, yeah, Gregory and Sky had a divorce, and, you know, that's probably one of the more normal things that Onision has ever done in his life, but sadly, his follow-up and reaction, well, it, 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 well, I'd say it wasn't normal, but it was definitely normal for Gregory's standards. Pretty much, Onision went onto his social media platforms and just seemingly started absolutely blasting Sky for everything and anything to do with this divorce. But the main part he was very upset with was, of course, the financial situation, because Greg was not happy that one of his responsibilities when it came to their divorce was actually to pay some money to Sky. As you can see here, on his Facebook, he was making a lot of posts pretty much just spreading rumors that Sky was stealing money from him due to the fact that, yeah, he had to pay financial support due to the laws in place when you go through a divorce. And the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't like he was just making angry posts on Facebook like your drunk uncle does. No, Anision at this point of time had a platform, he had a fan base that he definitely did have a lot of money and influence, meaning that he could use, I guess, his power to drag his ex's name through the mud. And I think it's quite disturbing that he was doing this not only in 2012, but this was going on for years. Onision, for years and years, just kept on bringing up Sky's name and just saying horrible things about her, just basically painting her out to be this villainous thief that was ruining his life. When we all know the reality was, was that they were just following through on responsibilities which came from a divorce. And there were posts calling Sky a and just nasty things out there and it's just kind of mad that we're like three layers into this iceberg and not only have we got a legal activity with a previous person in his life but also his alleged illegal activity with his current partner and also his previous experiences with his wife which are just as bad as the other things and in fact with all this stuff and all of these things that Anision was doing on a social media profile to I guess um, def defame his ex-partner his ex actually came out with a post where she pretty much exposed Inision for, shockingly enough, the abusive treatment and cycle that Inision put her through. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, to cut a long story short, it does just seem that this is another case of Gregory seemingly completely mistreating somebody. And as I said, it's just like this really messed up pattern of where this guy just can't interact with anybody without it just resulting in an absolute dumpster fire mess where alleged illegal activity seems to just always come into things. But ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, yeah, this is just the beginning, and it only gets worse, and that's when we move in to the story and horrible treatment of Shiloh. And Shiloh is yet again another story of Onision seemingly interacting with, hmm, 17-year-olds. Because yes, Shiloh is, again, another alleged victim of Onision. And why do I keep saying alleged, by the way? Because I do believe all of these people. It's because I do not want Onision to, uh, once again, take me to court. Honestly, I'm not feeling that, you know? what? Like the Titanic hit the iceberg, I don't want this iceberg to particularly go down. But yes, the story of Shiloh is one of the more well-documented stories when it comes to the Onion Man. It's one of the more, just honestly, absolutely horrific. And it began when Shiloh and Anisia met each other, when Shiloh was a fan. And ooh, oh, what's that? It's becoming a bit of a pattern. This guy meets a fan and... Oh, he starts interacting and getting really close. But of course, at this point of time when Shiloh and Onision met, it was before Kai. But that's confusing, because before Kai, there was Sky. And no, I'm not trying to be Eminem and rapping right now. That's just a weird coincidence. But yeah, that's because Onision met Shiloh whilst he was actually married to Sky. Because they actually started interacting with 10-hour Skype calls on the daily. And to put that in perspective, Onision at this point of time was 25 slash 26 years old. That's like my age. And this person, Shiloh, was 17. Ladies and gentlemen, if I was on Skype, just, just on Skype at this age, I feel like I should be put in a prison cell. But not only that, if I was on Skype with 17 year olds, well, well, obviously that is a little bit sus. And Anision was doing that whilst he was married. And Shiloh even alleges that at 17, Greg told her that he loved her. And in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, it kind of seems that once again, Greg admitted to this without directly saying, well, I say without directly saying it. I mean, he pretty much admitted to it in a video where he says he also left them, them being Sky, because he wanted to pursue a relationship with someone else. Someone? being a 17-year-old. And one of the main accusations in this relationship is that Anision actually crossed state lines in order to legally 
be with Shiloh. Now, I don't actually believe this is legal. In fact, I think it is, you know, very much still a crime. I mean, I'm not a legal expert here, but based on what I've been told in the past, I, I think, I mean, either way, if, if it is or isn't a crime, it's still morally wrong. Like, it's, if, if it's wrong in his state, but right in her state, honestly, I think we're going to have to start to go into kind of like our own human perspectives here and to say, yeah, I, I don't think it's right for a 26-year-old famous YouTuber to be sleeping with a 17 Teen year old fan. I don't think that's really right. And I think the internet also agrees with me, hence Shiloh has become a massive talking point when it comes to Onision, and one of the main reasons that Onision has finally been seemingly brought down. Yes, he does still have his social media empire, but it very much has been tainted at this point. It, like the Titanic has sunk to the very pits of the internet. Not the internet, the Titanic sunk in, I believe, the Pacific Ocean. And if it isn't the Pacific Ocean, well, I look very silly right now. And is it even morally correct to joke about a tragic event, even if it was 100 plus years ago? I don't know. Honestly, I don't really care. But yeah, not only did it seem that this relationship was extremely abusive, but Greg also had a disgusting and just outright disturbing habit of recording Shiloh having mental breakdowns and posting it on his YouTube channel. Now, this is one of the more controversial things that Onision did in his, I guess, origin of being controversial. That sounds like a weird thing to say, but the man obviously started somewhere, and that somewhere was, I guess, a positive place of where he did build a fan base, and to become controversial, I guess you need to have some building blocks in the first place, but yeah, Onision recording Shiloh having mental breakdowns in videos called The Truth were some of the main things that Onision was originally exposed for, because Greg uploaded these videos back in like 2011 and 10 to kind of prove a point, to prove that Shiloh was, I don't know, a, a, a bad person, a manipulative person, but all it really did was make Onision's fan base think, wow, you're really, really weird and also really just a bad person. And the video, shockingly enough, no longer exists on his channel because it was pretty much immediately deleted because, yeah, Gregory saw the comments were like, hey, mate, uh, this is this is really weird. And Greg deleted it and I guess just pretended that it never happened because he now to this day seems to think that he's like this moral beacon of society. But either way, he did that and it was something which, to this day, a lot of people are disturbed by. Recording somebody having mental breakdown is not only wrong, but then posting it is just... But honestly, I, I don't think I can say anything other than completely and outright messed up. And yeah, with all of these things out there between Shiloh and Anision, just over the last 10 years in general, Shiloh has kind of been able to, I guess, expose Anision. I, I don't know if that's the correct way to say it, because exposed nowadays is kind of used for anything. It's like, oh, uh, this beauty YouTuber was exposed for uh, pissing on somebody's bed. Don't think that's ever been a case, but that's kind of what it would be for. But also at the same time, when somebody commits a crime, they're like, oh, he was exposed. No, no, he's committed a crime. And, and what's gone on between here, in my opinion, and Anision and Shiloh is, is definitely very criminal. And honestly, I, I can't really believe that this man has managed to get away with from things just for so long. I'm surprised that he's never actually stepped foot into a jail cell. But um, that was the story of Shiloh and Gregory. And to this day, Shiloh is still speaking up against Gregory, even doing interviews and investigations with Chris Hansen. And just in general, being somebody who allowed the public just to see the very true nature behind who this terrible person is. But Talking of recording mental breakdowns, Anision actually has like a weird habit for doing this, not just with like, you know, his his actual partners who he was with when they were a certain age, but he also has a thing of recording breakdowns of himself. Yes, the immense breakdown part of this iceberg is honestly one of the more famous parts of Onision. Back in 2019, Gregory was becoming a bit of a talking point, a bit of a talking point in the basis of this is an absolutely terrible human being, and the internet was starting to think, well, fellas, Maybe we should do something about this. And uh, how was how was Anision's reaction to this? Well, he started to record himself screaming at a camera, uh, rubbing what could be described as poo over him. I'm, I'm still to this day not really sure. But uh, yeah, these mental breakdowns were absolutely everywhere. It was a really, you know, weirdly fun time because, I mean, I mean, it's not good to laugh at somebody mentally losing it unless they're like an awful person. I think that there's a, there's a point of where we could, you know, make a case that, oh, I'm, I'm digging myself into a hole here, aren't I? Basically, he was having a lot of breakdowns on the internet, but then Gregory basically then kind of changed the course of history by saying that these breakdowns were actually fake and he had gotten us all because we're laughing at him rubbing brown stuff over his face. 
I'm not really sure how this was a gotcha moment, but this was definitely what Gregory tried to portray it as. He said that these breakdowns were all fake, and there were a lot of breakdown videos. They don't now exist on his channel, but if you want to go and watch them with the kids, you can go and do so. Although, maybe you shouldn't watch it with the kids, because Gregory might try and message them. But yeah, these are, are a big part of the Onision lore uh, cinematic universe. People can debate whether they want whether these are fake or not fake. Personally, for me, I do think Onision was having a bit of a torrid time in his life. And I think that maybe there was a bit of truth to them. But then to kind of like rectify the fact that he realized he was being absolutely insane on his YouTube channel. He then tried to make it seem fake. I'm not really sure. But what we can say is the mental breakdown videos aspect of this iceberg is certainly one of the more famous parts of the Gregory Cinematic Universe. But with these breakdown videos, it kind of started to weirdly make Onision extremely popular. Popular for not, again, good reasons, but popular for, hey, do you remember that guy that danced around in a banana costume on camera for three minutes straight? Well, that guy apparently is really mentally ill. <laughs> I mean, the signs were there, weren't they? But yeah, this made Anision very popular, and it started to bring his, I guess, name to certain people's attention. And of course, one of those people was Chris Hansen. The bloke right there that's got yours truly blocked on Twitter. I don't know why. I, I don't. But he has. But Chris Hansen did actually find out about Gregory, and this turned into another massive situation. In fact, this could arguably be described as the biggest situation when it came to Onision, because Chris Hansen is somebody from the mainstream. If you did not know, he was the host and presenter. That's the same thing. He was the presenter of a show called To Catch a Predator. And what do we have here? An onion on top of Onision, but also a predator. And what do we have here? The host of a show which catches predators. You combine the two, you're going to get a very, very popular case. And this is certainly what it was with Onision and Chris Hansen. This situation in the early 2020 was massive. Everybody was talking about it. I think it at the time was one of the biggest talking points on the internet. Onision was seemingly going to be taken down by one of the biggest figures in mainstream television. And it even led to Chris Hansen going to Onision's house and trying to get in contact with them and it was just in general absolutely insane at the time i mean honestly regardless of what you think of chris hansen back then i remember people were hyped they were like we're finally getting this guy obviously that didn't result in anything but it was a fun time at the time but yeah the investigation has kind of been deemed as a failure today because mainly you know gregory isn't in prison but it's kind of i guess debated whether chris was even like that caring about the case in general a lot of people argue that chris hansen was merely using onision to kind of boost his ratings because before this situation chris was i guess kind of falling into a bit of irrelevancy obscurity it's kind of weird to describe chris hansen in that context but yeah people were arguing whether Chris Hansen even cared about this situation and whether he actually just wanted to make a load of money off Onision and there was even a show created with Chris Hansen where he investigated Onision in a mainstream kind of format. It was, a, it was a very controversial thing and we will actually get into it later in this iceberg but I think the main question has to be is with Gregory how has everything managed to be documented so well when it comes to this bloke because making this video whilst it is a very long process actually getting all of the information really wasn't that difficult because his whole history and timeline, his being the big old stinking onion, uh, his whole timeline is basically just everywhere on the internet and that does lead us into the next part of this iceberg of Repsion because yes, to every Thanos you have an Iron Man and to every Onision, it's kind of weird comparing Onision to Thanos, Thanos didn't you know message 17 year olds, he tried to destroy like half the universe but I'd argue that's a little less controversial, where, but we have Onision, who's the bad guy, and then you've got, in, in in this story, the good guy, the original person to speak up against Gregory Onision, Stinky Jackson, and of course, that is Repsion. Now, Repsion is a commentary channel, a OG commentary channel, who since 2012 has been speaking up against Onision. Back when The Onion actually had fans, Repsion was saying, this guy's really weird, and I think we should do something about this, even 10 years ago. I honestly kind of shocks me how long this goes back, and it's honestly nothing but, I guess, respectable to see how Repsion over the years has just constantly campaigned against this guy. I think it has always come from a genuine place of just trying to help victims get justice, and yeah, Repsion is somebody who I think has definitely helped more than anybody kind of learn about Anision, learn about his horrific past, and just learn how and why we need to stop this terrible, terrible human being. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Ah, oh, I'm choking on water. Jesus. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Maybe the Anissa was trying to take me out. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, moving on to the next part in this we have the thing that i mentioned just before repsion and that is anision in real life now anision in real life is something no human being ever wants to witness if that man comes anywhere near me i am getting well i'm just i don't know how to say this in ways to not get de de demonetized uh just stay away from me just i don't want to go near your stench please Anision in real life isn't what you think it is. It's not this man coming up to me. It's actually a show. Yes, the show that I previously mentioned with Chris Hansen. And yeah, this was created by Discovery Plus, featuring people like Eugenia Cooney and presented by Chris Hansen. And it's fair to say, yeah, this documentary didn't go down well for multiple reasons, but mainly because people just thought, yeah, this was a bad documentary. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've never actually watched this documentary because, I mean, surprisingly, I have better things to do, like playing old school RuneScape and Pokemon Black. Like, that is far more better beneficial to my life than watching whatever this is. I've watched and made millions of Anision videos at this point. I, I really don't think there's any valuable information that I could take from that. And I think most of the public just saw this documentary as something which was a cash grab, saw a network trying to profit on a very serious and delicate situation. And also a lot of people were kind of, I guess, mad at Chris Hansen for how he was handling the situation at the time when people were calling him out on his ethics and just in general how he investigates certain things. It kind of seemed that with the situation, with the documentary, the investigation, the videos, the meltdowns in 2019 and 2020, pretty much everything that we've covered in this tier so far, it all kind of culminated in a big stinky mess where Anision somehow took a bit of a dub. I don't know how that's even impossible, but Anision came out of that situation pretty uh, uh, unharmed and that's quite surprising given the fact that there was so much in that situation but yeah moving towards the bottom of the tip of the iceberg there are some more silly ones such as i mean greg is a p word now it's not silly based on the fact that oh i don't think he's this thing it, it's just silly based on the fact that like i mean you didn't really need it directly written out like i i, I, get, I guess kind of all of the things in this kind of suggest that uh, allegedly i have to say but um yeah i'm gonna allow you to guess what p word actually means don't comment it below please if you are going to comment it just comment poo or something because poo does kind of relate to it based on the fact that the man rubbed it on his face in a breakdown video again i am still a little bit confused uh how that was meant to be a gotcha moment that he had against us but nevertheless Maybe he just loves a big load of poo. In fact, no, what am I talking about? There is actually a thing on towards right at the bottom of this list to do with family members of Onision and feces. So if you're wondering where this goes really dark and, and, and bad, you, you kind of get the gist there. Uh, that was a bit of a fast forward. Let's continue with the silly things because it's not just the P word thing, which is silly. There's just some other things on here, which I mean, it, it, I guess it is part of the iceberg, like onions. What does onions refer to? To the fact that, you know, everybody calls this man the onion man, onion boy, onions. And I don't know why I'm saying it in such a angry way. I'm, I'm not angry. I'm just, maybe I am angry. Maybe I need some help. Please like this video and comment beans down below. That might help me out and make me feel a bit more positive. But Onions comes from Leafy is here. Yes, the YouTube titan. Holy shit, it's Leafy. I never really was a watcher of Leafy. Uh, not really my content. But yeah, he was a guy that kind of beefed Leafy. with Anision. And he made some of the most original... I, I, again, I'm saying this in such negative ways. I don't know why. I'm sorry. If, the, if you, I don't know if I'm just imagining things right now. But the tone of my voice does sound negative. Pretty much, Leafy, let's speak positive, made some videos about Anision. And in the video, he dubbed Anision as the Onion. The Onion Man. And this has pretty much stuck since 2016. Even all the way into this video. So uh, I would say that this is kind of Leafy's biggest achievement to have a nickname like this stick for so unbelievably long and maybe leafy didn't even admit, invent this name maybe somebody else did and maybe my research is just wrong but as far as i can tell this always originated from leafy greg is a big piece of poop now poop keeps coming up in this video i'm not sure why but um yeah <laughs> I don't know what this is even in this for. I mean, maybe it's to do with the fact that this man was uh, rubbing feces on him or something like that. But yeah, Greg is apparently a, a piece of poop. I am quite worried this video is going to get demonetized. YouTube, I promise there isn't any uh, deep lining under themes to do with poop in this video. I, I really do because I didn't even mean this to come off anything to do with any pooey substances in this video. I, I, I don't know how we keep managing to get onto poo. 
But um, moving on from Pooh, we get out of the more silly territories in this video and we move on to another rival of Pooh Man. <laughs> so, sorry, Pooh Man. We have Jacqueline Glenn. Now, Jacqueline is another person who has famously called out Onision for a very long time. Back in 2016, Jacqueline made a lot of videos, kind of, I guess, um, criticizing Onision, speaking out against Onision, and just in general saying why this bloke is a bit dodgy. And it even led to a few debates between the two, because back in 2016, I guess it was not as uh, taboo to interact with this guy, which I can kind of get, because, I mean, not all of the information and allegations and things out there about Onision were as, as public as they were now. So, back then it was more if he was seen as like another another jake paul who is kind of obsessed with poo so i need to stop bringing it up i need to stop bringing that up um sorry yeah uh he didn't really get on with jacqueline again pretty much also if you're wondering why there's so much hair on my microphone uh it's because i've got a dog who just won't stop shedding and his fur somehow gets on the microphone i don't i don't know how should we just get into the, the next one uh the mistreatment of yet again another human being this guy really doesn't have a weird strange pattern with this does he yes we have the mistreatment of billy and when i say mistreatment i am kindly wording that i am putting it in a way where i don't get uh, age restricted pretty much so who actually is billy well billy is somebody who onision apparently was cheating on kai with in the past and then the relationship kind of became a poly relationship which apparently failed between the three but that is a nice way of putting it once again because there is a more dark and, and sinister aspect to this because not only were there disturbing age gaps of gregory being 30 and billy being 18 but there are also a lot of accusations that came out of this not relationship because again i just feel weird calling that out of this thing there were a lot of allegations of abuse from onision and also kai just in this relationship how these two completely mistreated billy to a point of where onision apparently asked billy to get a tattoo which said i'm a liar and even suggested chaining billy up in his basement for a week for simply lying yes gregory was very upset that an 18 year old lied it's kind of starting to feel that anision is kind of like the leonardo dicaprio of youtube if you took away like all of the success and, and money and, and and just everything if, if you just kind of left the point that he just dates people significantly younger than him well, that's where the comparison can come from. And yeah, as I said, it wasn't just the fact that there was a creepy age crap there. Billy also came out with, as I said, these accusations and just basically said how Greg treated Billy absolutely horrifically. And again, Onision used his platform to attack yet again another person who he once had some form of relationship with. And if you feel like I'm kind of skimming over a lot of information, it's because I am. All I can really say without going into, into complete detail for four years is Onision horrifically missed treated Billy to a point of where it was just absolutely disgusting and in general all I can say is I have nothing but my, my best wishes for Billy and all the other people that Onision has mistreated because as I will keep saying this is just a very familiar pattern every single ex or partner or ex-friend of Onision that gets mentioned in this video seemingly just does not really have a good history with the bloke as you can see from this tip of the iceberg it's mainly to do with the most public interactions when it comes to Onision, the people that if you know Onision, you most likely know these people and how they've exposed the guy. And yeah, it's absolutely just disturbing, honestly. Like, as much as I can laugh and, and make jokes about how this man may or may not like 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 poop is obviously very very hard to read about and hard to kind of look into like honestly i'm genuinely surprised at how this man not only still has a platform but still surprisingly has somewhat of a fan base but yeah that is actually the tip of the iceberg we've pretty much gone through every part of it and now we move further into the iceberg and honestly i am kind of confused to how it can actually get any worse than this because we've gone through like the worst laws you can possibly break so, so how is this only, like, at the second point? It goes from here all the way down to there. And again, that's probably not looking very dramatic given the size of the printer. But, boys and girls, I, don't, I can't afford a printer that can print further than A4. What do you think I am, Mr. Beast? <laughs> Now, 
Now, if there's one thing I've kind of noticed about this section of the iceberg is this is kind of more obscure information about Onision. The first part of this iceberg was more, oh, <laughs> this guy's absolutely horrific. But this part is just more like information where you may or may not know it, but at the same time, a lot of it is weird and some parts are, as you kind of expected, absolutely horrific, but we start off with something, yeah, obscure, of where Onision basically wants people to know him as James. Because ladies and gentlemen, me and Onision actually have one thing in common. Yes, we both share the same middle name. Onision's middle name is James, and my middle name was James. I've actually just gone and get it changed because I do not want to even be closely resembled to be close to that man in any way, shape, or form. Look, I know middle names have nothing to do with your actual, like, heritage or where you're from, but... I'm not risking it. But yeah, Onision apparently um, wants to be called James, and in fact, he actually has changed his name to legally be James according to some Reddit posts. So I, I don't actually know if this is true. If that is the case, um, I'm, I'm happy for you, Chief. But honestly, I'm, I'm just going to know you as what I've always known you as, and, and that is the... Um the poo man the one banana video he made now this is a, a piece of internet heritage this is the one thing where if i could like make a time machine i would go back and just nuke the world sorry i wouldn't do that i would go back and delete the video because that video has kind of built this man's whole entire empire who would have thought dressing up as a banana and, and dancing around in front of a green screen can make you that popular the internet is truly a sick place and this is a video where you've probably definitely seen it for me this was my first ever discovery of the bloke as i mentioned earlier i was in school and somebody had it on their stupid little phone of all oh, there's a grown man dressing up as a banana I hope this doesn't go down some weird, weird places. Um, well, oh, I need to get my middle name changed. But for some Onision lore, this video came out on the 25th of September 2009, which now is probably the worst event to happen in September in American... Co I can't say that. Um, it, it's one of the more terrible things to happen in a September-based event in American culture. I don't even think... He, is, he, is he American? Oh, no, sorry. He's from... Pudonia. Sorry, I've, I've got... That's, that wasn't even funny. That wasn't funny. Should we move on? Um, oh, no, we can't, can we? Onision needed the banana video, and this was a sick, sick video, which, honestly, I think YouTube just needs to remove at this point. It's got, like, 90-plus million views. And I think, as a society, if there's one thing we can really do to kind of benefit the world, it's just... Let's just pretend this never happened. As much as we can meme it and, and, and actually make this, like, some funny thing... We gotta move on from it, boys and girls. We gotta pretend this thing didn't happen. Because apparently this was the one positive thing that Anision contributed to the world. People saw this video and subscribed. And honestly, what was going on in 2009? But then we go from Greg's Bananas to Greg is a Cuck. Which apparently is on this iceberg twice. I don't know why. I guess they wanted to solidify that this man is a Cuck. Um, if he is, I'd say good luck to him. But I, I can't do that because, you know, it may involve minors. So... Don't, don't have good luck with that. Please, just go to jail. Just hand yourself in. But either way, um, this piece of information is, I guess, mainly because Onision kind of admitted to it in the past, saying, my wife is bi and I literally can't give her everything a woman can. She wants a girlfriend. Uh, baby, I support that 100%. I mean, congrats. You have admitted to uh, being a cuck. But apparently, no, he hasn't. Because he then went on to deny it in, in another tweet where he actually was like, no, 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 I, I'm not actually that. And it's like, Greg, you can't escape this, my friend. We've all seen the tweet. You are definitely this one thing. And honestly, if we take away from the fact that in this hypothetical cuckoldry relationship, he may be dating a 17-year-old, maybe it could be considered one of the more normal things that he did. Again, if it didn't involve teenagers, but... There's no way we can kind of guarantee that, given everything. Because, yeah, there is a lot of criminal actions that this man has been accused of, and with all these criminal actions, it has led to some repercussions. Because, actually, one of the things on this iceberg is Onision was banned from Patreon. And why did this happen, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it goes back to a certain individual that we brought up previously, Billy. Because, apparently, in 2019, Onision actually doxed Billy, and Patreon said, because of this, they removed Onision due to him violating the bullying and harassment policy, and they do not fund the practice of doxing. And this led to Onision having a lot of breakdowns. He got he got very upset about this. In some of these things, he was bringing up his Patreon, being like, they banned me from Patreon. But then he was like, oh, no, guys, that was me joking. The poo on the face wasn't real. Greg, we know it was real, mate. You don't need to deny it every single time. And honestly, 
I haven't actually probably shown the full videos of him doing that. There may be an onion on top of him, but again, I, I kind of wish I could, but sadly, I, I don't want him to make money from this. But yeah, speaking of making money, Onision was certainly making less money after he was banned from Patreon. And this actually does relate to a lot of the things that we mentioned in the tip of the iceberg category, because yeah, YouTube in 2021 confirmed that they had demonetized Onision for violating his partner program uh, policy by endangering a child's safety off-platform. And honestly, fellas, it's kind of mad to me that Onision was managing to make money on YouTube even in, like, some part of 2021. Like, this happened in January 2021, but the fact that he was still able after, like, everything, like, this was a year after the Chris Hansen situation and FBI investigation, YouTube, only then were like, oh, 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 maybe... Maybe we should do something about him. And, and given who the new YouTube CEO is, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if, you know, YouTube made an Anision NFT. Maybe that would make him some money. I don't know. If you were to buy an Anision NFT, honestly, I mean, it would be better than paying for his butt cheeks because this leads us in... <sighs> This leads us into the next thing. Anision created a lonely man's, and it even says do not research because he started selling pictures of his bum cheeks and... Oh god, it's, it's, it's honestly one of the more um, sad things that have ever happened in human society. I'm not just talking YouTube, I'm just talking this this whole thing that we've, we've been doing for the last like, 20, 30,000 years. Like, honestly, we should have, like, at the moment he made a lonely man, so we should have been like, nah, we're, we're cutting ties there. And even to this day, Onision is, is still posting his bum cheeks for money on the internet. And I, I guess this is actually like his only form of income these days. Because yeah, no Patreon, YouTube have demonetized him. So I'm not really sure where he's actually making his money from. But with this, we move into more, I guess, alleged criminal actions of the Onion Man. And no, the criminal actions are not posting his bum cheeks, even though that should be considered criminal. It's the alleged mistreatment of Adrian and also the voice mails sent to Adrian. Now the question you're probably wondering, well, who is Adrian? Well, shockingly enough, ladies and gentlemen, I know you may be surprised to hear this, but it's another X that Anision treated badly. Yes, Adrian is another brave person that spoke up against Anision, and in the last remaining remnant of Adrian on the internet, she actually posted a massive letter, just detailing her experiences with Greg, and saying that he was an unstable, sociopathic, emotionally bully, and if he didn't want people to think that, he shouldn't have treated her in the way that he did. Now, the letter is extremely long, but it does pretty much paint the exact same picture that all his other exes were painting about him, that yes, this man is absolutely terrible, but it gets even more uh, strange and weird when you go into the voicemail section of this iceberg, because yes, they, there, there was some <laughs> stalking involved. Of course there was. Of course Gregory couldn't have himself, but stalk an ex, because firstly, Onision actually was the one to break up with Adrian, and weirdly enough, he could not handle that, because Adrian was like, okay, see you later, but Greg could not handle that probably because his fragile little poo ego was shattered. And it was exposed that leaked voicemails were sent to Adrian, where in one day over a 10 to 12 hour period, Onision apparently sent Adrian 10 texts, 14 voicemails, made four videos about Adrian, and left four comments on her Google Plus. Basically, despite Greg ending the relationship, he just could not handle that, and he just wanted to speak to this person. But not in like a, oh hey, can, can, we, can we chat? In a way of, oh, I'm going to actually stalk you. And the thing is, you may say, well, how, how do you know it was actually stalking? Well, mainly because of the, what we just brought up, but also because Greg himself admits to these things when he said these quotes. If I don't have you, then I guess I'll be single for a long time. I don't want to turn into a total, total creep. And I've turned into a stalker. Which honestly, it's just disturbing to hear. The man literally knows what he is doing is wrong, but he is he's literally doubling down in these voice notes designed to stalk and harass this person. So honestly, I have nothing but best wishes towards Adriana. I'm pretty sure that she has absolutely gotten out of the uh, Anision world, cinematic universe, whatever you want to call it. I don't believe Adriana is regularly brought up when it comes to Gregory, but she is definitely somebody that has been affected by Greg, horrifically mistreated by Greg, and I have nothing but my empathy and support for Adriana. But that's when we move on to, yet again, more 
disturbing and just frankly outright honestly potentially illegal content when it comes to greg and that is rate your body 16 plus and yes um this this, this, this is as weird as it sounds so this and this is exactly as it sounds, because Greg had a series on his YouTube channel, which actually still exists to this day with millions of views, of where Greg, on his little freaky website, would get his little fans to, uh, and I say little because that was literally the description of their age. They were little in the sense that they'd not been alive for that long. They were around the ages of 15 to 18 for the most part from what I've seen, but pretty much Greg had a series where he told his fans to enter photos of their body and he would rate them in a YouTube video. Now, Greg likes to say that this series was always 18 plus, but uh, a few screenshots do show you that this certainly wasn't a series where people of the age of 18 were posting their body. In fact, it did seem that a lot of minors were entering this thing, I don't even know what to describe it as, just this really, really dodgy video series that he had on this channel. And just in general, it's beyond creepy that this still not only exists on YouTube, but just creepy to the fact that he actually just this would be a good idea. And honestly, ladies and gentlemen, it's genuinely bizarre to me that this was even back in like 2016 allowed to fly. Like, did anyone not see this and think, oh, maybe the YouTubers shouldn't be rating 15 and 16 year olds bodies on the internet. Maybe a YouTuber shouldn't be rating anybody's bodies on the internet. That is weird, weird behavior. But what gets even more weird is the fact that not only did he have this terrible series, but he also seemingly ran a cult? Sikeska. Now, honestly, I'm kind of surprised that this is higher up on the list. This is kind of a very obscure piece of Inision lore when it comes to the cinematic universe. Pretty much, Sikeska was a, a thing which originates all the way back to 1997. As you can see here, it says religion, 1985 to 1996, Christianity, but then 1997 to present, Sikeska? So the question is, what actually is <laughs> Sikeska? Shortly after the loss in the interest of Christianity, I began searching for new answers. Though in my search, I did not look to others for help. I looked within myself and chose to believe what I thought was logical, and my faith became something I called Sikeska. And I do find this absolutely incredible. Like, this is like this is a guy that was so egocentric even before the social media stuff. Because you've got to remember this this happened and was started way before Onision started his YouTube channel. So even back then, this man was so egocentric with his beliefs, he thought, I am going to start a religion. And the overall explanation of what Sikeska actually is says that it takes from various beliefs from every religion that seems the most logical and compresses them with one understanding. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you went to a local shop and you went in the pick and mix section, but instead of like little strawberries and Coca-Cola bottles, you'd get, I don't know, a bit, a, bit, a bit of Judaism, a bit of Islam, maybe even a sprinkle of Christianity, you shove it all into the bowl and what have you got? You have Sikeska and also probably a lot of religious conflict. <laughs> I can't believe, I actually know, I can believe this is a real thing. This is the most Anision thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It goes on to say on the website that this goes all the way back to 1997, but he even created a website in 2004 promoting the religion, and there was even old forum posts shown of this man trying to convince people who were Catholics to become a part of the Onision religion. It's, it's genuinely some of the more, like, incredible things I've seen this man do, and honestly, at this point, as I said, I, I'm, I'm actually not really shocked that this is a real thing. And, he, and these forum posts still exist to this day, apparently, which is actually kind of magical in a really messed up way. I'm not really sure if Onision still practices this religion to this day, but honestly, I I, I wouldn't be surprised. Knowing the Onion Man, he's probably got like Sikeska, I can't say the name, Sikeska 2.0 on like some weird Patreon paywall. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what his Lonely Man's is. You know, you subscribe, yes. you're thinking you're getting some butt cheeks, but all you're getting is religious butt cheeks. But then with Anision, you know, searching for all the divine truth in the world, he's also well known, as you can see on the iceberg, for this category called the truth. Now, what actually was the truth? Well, 
It certainly wasn't anything religious, in fact it relates to a video he uploaded about Shiloh, of where he once again recorded Shiloh having somewhat of a, a, a personal experience. And when I say personal, I don't mean it in the good sense of terms, I mean it in the fact that this is the thing that I referenced earlier, of where Shiloh had a mental breakdown, and The Onion like posted it on his YouTube channel as some weird gotcha moment to prove to his audience that, that he's the good guy in all of these situations that he's got himself in back in 2011, and, and and Shiloh's the bad guy, and then that's why he's recording her having a, a a mental breakdown. And as I said earlier, this no longer exists on the channel because I think Onision saw his audience's reaction for, oh yeah, guys, this is yeah, this is mental, isn't it? And um, that no longer exists. But it's a really good moment of time to kind of truly represent this guy's character and how absolutely horrific he can be. And then we move on to the wetland. I know this is in no reference to Onision being a wet lettuce. This is actually to do with with something involving him and, and, and an area that he lived in, because Onision lives in a swamp. Um, I, I, I mean, I kind of feel bad for the citizens of Shrekville, but uh, yeah, apparently the bloke lives or lived in a swamp, and it caused a lot of controversy when Onision actually broke some environmental laws when he actually removed some of the wetland. And this was actually a bit of a massive controversy when this happened in 2018. Pretty much it actually seemed that Gregory could go to jail for what he had done here. It seemed that he received a lot of legal threats for this, and honestly, there would be like some weird, sick, twisted like sense of justice in the world if this man went to prison for devastating the ecosystem of the world rather than just devastating humanity in general. But yeah, as you can see here in 2018, Gregory was having a mental breakdown over the fact that, yes, he was getting legal threats over this situation of where he had removed certain plants and vegetation from wetland, which was protected by the government. And I think in the end of the story, Onisi kind of caved to these people and was like, alright, I will stop, you know, rampaging through the swamp. <laughs> so, I don't know why it's funny to me that Greg once lived in a swamp, but he, he certainly did. And uh, yeah, he almost went to prison for absolutely devastating the swamp, which would have been, as I said, quite ridiculous considering this man has kind of devastated humanity at this point. But uh, talking of devastating humanity, we move on to this man's parenting because, yes, Onision actually does have, have, have children and... Yes, I, I do very much feel sorry for them, because one day they are going to stumble across the internet and discover everything. Greg's daughter found... <laughs> Alright, I'm not laughing because of because of what happened, but yeah. Greg's daughter fell down... Uh, fell, fell out the window. And, and, and this isn't funny for what happened, but... It, it's just kind of funny that this, this is just so direct to the point. There isn't like a funny meme or reference here. This is quite frankly what actually happened. Greg's daughter fell out of a window, his two-year-old daughter, and his actual first reaction to this was to, to pick up a camera and shove it in the face of the daughter and... and <laughs> and record what happened. And it's genuinely outstanding to me, because I've said throughout this video, Onision treats absolutely everybody in his life horrifically, and, and that doesn't just not contribute to his children. It seems even in this, like, storyline, Onision has also been pretty, pretty bad as a parent, as you can see from this. I mean, I don't know the ins and outs, but if you're allowing your two-year-old daughter to fall out of the window and then record it, that there's clearly something dodgy going on there. But then we move on to the next part of the iceberg, which is baby cat. Carrots. Now, this is one of the more personal stories when it comes to Gregory, and it goes back to something we mentioned earlier with the mental breakdown videos that Gregory uploaded. Not the ones which he posted of his exes, but the ones he posted of himself, which were apparently not real. But in those mental breakdown videos, Gregory liked to mention Baby Carrot. And Baby Carrot basically referred to the fact that a lot of his, I guess, um, well, not fans, but the people that liked to view his videos, uh, started to say that Greg had a Baby Carrot in reference to the man's well, baby carrots, and, it, and if you need me to explain what a baby carrot is, I'm I'm just gonna say it's a it's a certain body part, which is the size of a baby carrot. And Gregory wasn't really <laughs> happy about this, and this, this became a bit of a meme throughout the entire, I guess, uh, anti and Eastion community. And to this day, people like to bring up the baby carrot story, and Gregory himself does seem very upset that the internet now knows that he indeed has a 
a, 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 a baby carrot. Greg is a waterhead. Now, I, I don't think I know the true specifics of what this actually came from or originated from, but I believe this is to do with the fact that Gregory has a, a certain head shape, and that, that, that isn't me making a joke here. Like, people out there, I guess, have described the man's head of, of, of looking a certain way, and right now you're looking at Greg with an onion on his face, so you can't really get it, but I guess a lot of people say that his head is, is shaped weirdly. I'm, I, I'm not too sure about that, but based on my research, that's kind of all I could find with this segment, but uh, yeah, his uh, fan base or anti-fan base like to say that he indeed is a waterhead. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm still not really sure what that means, but th that is definitely something. And by the way, fellas, I thought I'd say, if you kind of noticed that throughout this video, my, like, jumper or hair is randomly getting wet, it's because I have to keep going and, like, splashing water into my face because recording this video has taken so long. You do not understand how many hours it takes to actually record going through this pit of hell. This has been the longest video I've ever had to make, and I, I, I don't know if I'm regretting it at this point, but, um, either way, could you, could you just please drop a like if you're still here? I don't even know where we're at at this point. This feels like one, like, the seventh hour, but I don't even think this video is going to be longer than an hour and a half. But let's continue to the next piece of the Gregory mess. And that is, of course, serving the wrong Chris Hansen. Now, what does this mean? Well, when he took Chris Hansen to court, because that is something that he did, he took Chris to court, but it turned out that this was the wrong Chris. <laughs> I, I actually don't know how this is actually possible. But yeah, this is something that he did. Some poor random bloke out there called Chris Hansen, who wasn't the guy from the TV show to catch a predator, <laughs> was randomly called to court by Onision. And of course, this had to lead the case to be dropped because, yeah, this man had no reason to be here. And also, I feel like Onision would have lost the case if it was the real Chris Hansen or the fake Chris Hansen. Not the fake Chris Hansen, but the, the Chris Hansen that has no um, relation to Onision. But if there is one good thing that did come from this... Um, court case. It's Anision's attire to turning up to these events where the man looks like he's got caught at 2pm and five aside at 3pm. It was one of the more peculiar moments of when Onision turned up to a court case in a Astros, but uh, either way, I hope the match went well afterwards, son. Uh, let's move on to the next part of the iceberg, which of course is the abomination known as the Onision fanbase. Now, pretty much this is in reference to, yes, Onision's fanbase being a complete, utter mess. Now, at this point of time in 2023, the fan base is in absolute disarray. I'm genuinely convinced that most of his fans aren't actually real human beings and are either bots that Onision has wrote himself or it's just Onision spending his days on fake accounts where he has conversations with himself. I don't know which one would be as terrifying as the other, but honestly, I feel like the more terrifying option is the fact that there are still fans of this man out there. It may be hard to believe, but when you go onto Onision's website, there are people out there being like, um, I'm going to give you my money, Gregory, and they actually do that. And, and even worse, there are people that pay to see this man's bum cheeks. But um, in terms of his actual main fan base, I guess you could go back to the years of 2016 of when this man was surprisingly relevant. And, and yeah, back then he had a, a raving, rabid fan base who would do anything to defend him. And nowadays, I feel like most of them have uh, gotten past the age of 12 years old and kind of realized that, oh... This man's a bad human being, and I, <coughs> I don't want to associate with him anymore. And Gregory also probably doesn't want to associate with them because they're also, you know, actually above the age of 18. But with that, we have to discover how Onision actually originally made this fan base. And of course, that takes us to his vegetarian body. Now, I don't really think I need to explain what part of this iceberg means, but, uh, Basically, there was a video of where Onision was kind of repping the vegetarianism, is this veganism, because he is a vegetarian. I think he might be a vegan. I don't really care, to be honest with you. But yeah, he uploaded a video where he took off his shirt and went, This is my vegetarian I'm not going to do it. But you can get the point. Uh, I'm not going to play the video, copyright reasons and all. And also, I just, honestly, he looks a bit video, and uh, I'm not willing to get a whiff of that on my video. So, um, yeah. That's, that's that explained. Moving on to the next segment of the Onision Iceberg, which of course is the Shiloh Forgot About Me section, which again is another case of asking the question of what actually is wrong with this man and how is he still on this website? Because yes, Onision uploaded another video about Shiloh, which became pretty infamous of where he uploaded Shiloh having a, a, a case of memory loss due to the stress of a panic attack. And then Gregory thought that this would be a a good idea to post to the internet because 
I don't actually know why anyone would think this would be good. I can't even think of some actual reasonings here. But yeah, Shiloh forgot her memory because of a panic attack probably caused by Onision. And he posted that. And obviously, I'm not going to show that for a multitude of reasons. But honestly, the main one being a, a moral reason of... Uh, this is something which obviously shouldn't be on the internet if you haven't got consent to post it. But Gregory, obviously... I mean, we, we know he doesn't really care about that sort of thing. But that moves us straight into the final part of this part of the iceberg called the mistreatment of Luxie Moo. And Luxie Moo is somebody who is actually known as Haley, And Haley is yet again another victim of Gregory and Kai. Pretty much, Haley is somebody that has spoken up for a very long time about Anision and just in general how Anision and Greg treated Haley. Haley at one point of time was actually, shock surprise, a fan of Onision on and it led to Chris Hansen investigation interviews and plenty of things out there of where Haley just documented her horrific experience of these two and Greg also using his platform to pretty much just attack Haley just like he has done with plenty of other partners in the past and I again I, I just I just don't know how his fan base, which apparently, as I said, still slightly exists to this day, sees all of this stuff and is just like, oh, um, I'm, I'm going to not only look past this, but actually believe that this man is in the right. I know that the most of the internet at this point thinks that Anision is a horrible person, but it is kind of worrying that there still are some human beings out there that do respect and value this man. But it's also worrying that this man was respected and valued up until the point of like, I don't know, 2018, 2019, to a point of where he did still have thousands and thousands of followers then and, and yeah yeah as i said it's it's like 10 followers now but 10 followers is more than none but that does actually conclude this section of the iceberg and as you could see it was more just obscure information in comparison to the top one yes as we just went through there was some more horrible and horrific ones but honestly i i don't think that this part was the worst part this isn't the true nightmare fuel that i mentioned at the beginning of this video but that does continue our descent into the bottom of the iceberg. And with that, I'm going to go wash my face once again and probably change into a different color jumper. So uh, be right back. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bottom of the iceberg. We're getting closer to the abyss where things truly do get absolutely horrific. And yes, my hair is wet right now, so uh, without further ado, let's get into the first part of this video. Video? This iceberg, which is the weird, weird obsession with Netanessa. I am sorry if I mispronounced that, but you may be wondering who actually is Netanessa. Well, that's where we go back to the very top of the iceberg when we go and speak about Sky, because this apparently is the sister of Sky. Netanessa was somebody who Onision knew when she was 15, and Onision apparently had some strange, weird obsession with her whilst he was actually married to Sky, and as I said earlier, Anision at this point of time would have been in his mid-twenties, and yeah, she was 15. Apparently, he tried to kiss her when she was drunk one time, and also, apparently, after Sky and Anision had broken up, he was sending emails to Netanessa years after this, and it, it, it's just really, really strange to look at, especially when you consider the fact that when he was apparently sending these emails, Anision was going to get married to Kai very, very close to that date. So it's a very peculiar part of the Onision Sky storyline. And honestly, I, I'm not really too sure where this led to. People out there say that Onision was truly obsessed with this person. And I'm not too sure about the extent of where this goes to. But yeah, there is some very, very suspicious stuff out there. But from the obsession of ex-wife's little sisters, we move on to Onision's obsession with Eugenia Cooney. Now, pretty much to summarize this, Onision apparently over the year period of 2016 to 2020 actually uploaded 70 plus videos about Eugenia Cooney. And if you don't know who Eugenia is, well, this is Eugenia. Eugenia is a YouTuber that over the years, a lot of the community have been worried about for a lot of specific reasons to do with Eugenia's health. But Gregory kind of used, I guess, the community's worry for this person as a way to seemingly take advantage of the situation for view-based reasons, but also just for like some sick, weird level humor. Because Anision's videos started off seemingly, I guess, appearing from the place 
place of caring all the way to uploading Sims 4 videos where he said Eugene Cooney died in his Sims 4 world, which is just really, really weird given the sheer nature of the situation when it came to Eugenia Cooney. And this led to Anision actually having debates with people like Jacqueline Glenn about Eugenia, and just in general, it's pretty well documented how this man, I guess, had some weird obsession with Eugenia, but Anision having obsessions with people is a familiar thing that you will discover throughout this iceberg. The guy, I mean... He's not really a normal bloke. I think that if there's one thing we can take at this point, the guy definitely is a little bit odd. And that does actually move us into the next part of this iceberg, which is chained up to a wall in the basement. Now, this is uh, one of the more famous Onision stories, and I actually did mention it earlier. Pretty much, as I said, this was when Onision suggested chaining Billy up as a form of punishment for her actions in there. R relationship. There's nothing more I can say because I've already mentioned it before, but yeah, this is definitely one of the bigger talking points when it comes to Gregory, but talking of punishment, it moves us on to the next thing of where Greg was actually banned from Twitch. Now, I do kind of feel like this should be moved up to the part of the iceberg that we've already spoken about, but yeah, Gregory was banned from Twitch for pretty much the exact same reasons he was banned from Patreon. For doxing, because obviously that goes against Twitch guidelines, but it does actually seem that he has now been unbanned from Twitch. I'm not really too sure about this, but either way, he was banned from Twitch, and at the point of time where that happened, Gregory lost a lot of money because he pretty much had lost all forms of financial avenues. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to the Battle of the Bellends. Yes, we have Social Repose versus Onision, and honestly, uh, you, you couldn't really get two worse people to pit against each other. I mean, I guess one of them is much worse than the other, but pretty much, uh, if you don't know who Social Repose is, he's uh, this guy. Now, this YouTuber is a very controversial man for plenty of reasons such as uh, cheating on his girlfriend or wife I'm not too sure on the specifics there but yeah he's pretty much known for wearing this headdress and getting called out for cultural appropriation making very um let's just say controversial music and also just being a little bit of a um, an odd bloke. Now this man seemingly back in like 2016 had a lot of issues with Onision just like most of the internet and he mainly had the issue of the fact that Gregory had said some inflammatory things about at the time his wife or girlfriend Jacqueline Glenn. Yes there's a lot of familiar faces and names throughout this whole debacle and pretty much Onision and social repose went at each other's throats and I, I don't know why I just find it funny that these two had, a, had beef and and I, to be fair, I, can't, I don't think I can say beef because I think they're both vegetarians. But uh, yeah, they had they had arguments, they had beef, and uh, it's it's a, I guess ingrained into internet folklore now. And uh, yeah, there's not much I can really say about this other than wow, I'm I'm really glad we got past this phase of the internet. But um, with that, we then move into the next section, which is take some responsibility. Which again is another case of of Greg making me chuckle because pretty much what this was in reference to was Onision screaming at his own child saying take some responsibility now i'm actually unsure of what the context is in that clip and i'm not going to play it but i will describe it as what i would see as a 13 year old screaming down a microphone in an mw2 game anision shouting at his own children to take some responsibility his children that are um this this age i'm not really sure why he would do that and also just screaming at your children in general not really the best um, form of parenting but then again am i really shocked this is the same guy that allowed his child to fall out of the window and his first his first <laughs> his first thing that he did was pull out a camera and record so yeah I'm not really shocked that this guy isn't a good parent, but um, yeah, this is certainly what this is to do with on the iceberg, and there's nothing more I can really say here. And it does feel like parenting is a familiar pattern when it comes to Onision's story. It seems that throughout his life, he has always struggled with the concept of it, whether it's his own parenting, or even his parents' parenting, which we learn in Gregory's controversial novels, because if you didn't know, well, I'm sorry I'm about to introduce you to something absolutely horrific, because Gregory is an author. He has plenty of books out there, which he, he's wrote and written whatever the word is to, I guess, um, uh, uh, make some money. I don't really know why he made these books, but pretty much they're not exactly, um, well, let's just say good literature. I don't know if that's the correct way of speaking English, but pretty much these books were very controversial, and there are plenty of people out there that have reviewed these books, said that pretty much these books are absolute travesties, which pretty much just embarrass modern English <laughs> literature, and I I myself have actually read through some of these things and I can't lie after reading these books I kind of felt shame embarrassed I, I just felt like if if there was something I could be doing with my time it wouldn't be reading 
this yes. And even recently, Gregory's been writing a biography about his life where, in this book, he describes himself as Batman, but also speaks about the life stories with his parents and just how, in general, he did not get on with his parents in his childhood and even had some big old scraps with Papi Onision and, uh... Yeah, that is your introduction to these books, and my only recommendation can be to, 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 to just never, ever read these things. Just just watch my videos, watch my podcast where we reviewed them, because no human being should ever have to witness what, what Onision has wrote in a book about his life. And you can see from these reviews here, which aren't from YouTubers, but are just from people that simply enjoy literature, that yes, these books are absolute abominations, which should simply should never be read by anybody. In fact, I would go as far as to say that these books should be some form of new CIA torture method, where if you're trying to get some form of information out of somebody, just play the Onision audiobook. But talking of CIA torture methods, one of those methods is actually forcing somebody to attend VidCon, because VidCon is something that actually comes up in this iceberg. And you may be wondering, well, what's VidCon and Onision got to do with each other? Well, my friends, allow me to take you to a, a, a little stage of the internet where, honestly, maybe we should have just, just forgotten about the, it's kind, of, kind of like pretty much everything to do with Onision, maybe we should have just forgotten about the entire timeline, but allow me to remind you of um, Onision having a big old smoochy woochy with Shane, <laughs> Shane Dawson. Nobody, Nobody needs to know about this, but I am here to deliver this information. Pretty much back in the era of 2011, Shane Dawson and Elysion just simply just love lips in each other. Their big old sweaty lips combined, creating, honestly, sadly not a nuke, but they certainly created something. The love was in the air, and Shane Dawson and Elysion back in the day seemingly had the, 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 the hots for each other. And um, a very famous clip originated from VidCon. It was something that actually made made this event somehow more popular by the fact that these two attended and these two were possibly having gay romantic relations with each other. But shockingly enough, Shane Dawson and Anision having big gay loving relationships isn't actually the reason that this is on the iceberg. It's actually just one of the reasons because the main reason was Anision at one point in 2012 was actually banned from VidCon. Now honestly, you could say, why was he banned from VidCon? I don't think I need to answer that. I, I, I feel like Anision, just the name is 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 just a reason enough i mean should this man be at an event attended by mainly children probably not but um let's get into the actual reason well pretty much it was just because of the controversy that in 2012 that he'd been involved in pretty much vidcon saw him as a controversial figure and they just wanted to distance themselves they didn't want to be a part of this and how did gregory respond was he going to respond in a mature manner where he maybe contested the decision but you know ultimately came at it from a an adult perspective of where he was sensible and you know nuanced and not absolutely insane no, he didn't do that. Instead, Anision just had an outright breakdown on social media where he pretty much just accused people at the event of being outright nonces. And uh, yeah, it's the most Anision response possible. And honestly, the response is slightly ironic that he did accuse people of being that considering, well, well, considering this man's entire timeline. Mother of God. But yes, that was the VidCon era of uh, Anision. He smooched Shane Dawson and then got banned from the events, which, I mean, to be fair, I guess that does make sense. And then we move on to Onision's interactions with Strange Eons. Now, I do apologize if I mispronounced that, but Strange Eons is a YouTuber that at one point in time did actually criticize some of Onision's literature, which we previously mentioned. Basically, what Strange Eons said in their reviews of Onision's books was pretty much what every other human being has said, is that these books are complete utter abominations which simply should be burnt. And how did Anision... Well, they didn't say that. I do have to clarify. They actually just gave very fair and uh, usual normal book reviews, and they just simply did not like the reviews. But Anision could not respond normally, and instead he put on a wig, a load of makeup, just, I guess, in an attempt to humiliate strange eons. And obviously, this went pretty much down terribly with the YouTube community, just like this man's responses to pretty much any situation uh, goes down. I, I, I think you can kind of see, yet again, a another pattern with Anision. He'll get himself in a situation, he'll respond, and the community will usually see that response as an absolute immature mess, and Anision will inevitably delete his response and pretend that it 
never happened. But sadly for Onision, the internet does not forget, and I think this man has a bigger digital footprint than pretty much any other human being on planet Earth. And I think one of the more fascinating things when it comes to Gregory is, despite how this man is one of the more criticised people on, on, on the internet pretty much, this guy has faced an absolute plethora of people speaking against him, calling him out for his actions. It, it's kind of mad to me, because you'd think at this point he'd kind of be numb to criticism, he wouldn't care about it anymore, because surely there are only so many commentary videos that can be made on you until you, 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 you just, just stop caring about them. Because like this man's done pretty much every single crime, and when, you, when you've done all of that, and then you get criticised for, for your book being a little bit stinky, surely, surely the book criticism should just go over your head, but, but no, <laughs> this man, despite everything, still gets upset at the smallest, most minute of criticisms, even just fair criticism of that sound saying, oh, yeah, y y your book's a little bit bad in Ision, maybe write a better one. Even with stuff like that, the man still has outright breakdowns, and I think that's a fantastic summary of the guy's character of just being a complete whiny little piss baby. And with that, we move on to Onision's gay relationship with, Sh well, gay obsession, I have to say, with Shane <laughs> Dawson. And yes, we've basically already gone through this, but um, yeah, as you can kind of work out, now, Shane Dawson and Anision back in the day seemingly had a bit of a romantic relationship, well not relationship, thing going on. That's what we'll describe it as a, a, a thing. And there were actually compilation videos created, which I believe still exist, of uh, these two men having their gayest moments together. And if there was a reason to why it took me so long to come out as bisexual, it definitely would be I can't say that. I can't say that in the modern day. Uh, sorry, if it, basically they were possibly smooching in private and in public and uh this was a thing and we're gonna move on before i say something which will get me inevitably cancelled let's move on to something less controversial um the military industrial complex otherwise known as onision in the u.s air force because yes this absolute crazy nut job was indeed in in the military and if there were any um, any grounds for new laws being re <laughs> reintroduced for the age going up for the military, this would be one of them. Because yes, Anision was once a part of the U.S. Air Force. He was a proud member of 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 the Air Force, and um, honestly, I'm just kind of terrified to think that this man was the man bringing freedom freedom to other countries. Pretty much he was in the Air Force between 2005 and 2008 and he claims that he actually left the military because he found out that when he was going for his training, to complete the training he would actually have to kill a rabbit and he said he could not do that and instead he chose to go through with an honourable discharge. But ladies and gentlemen, like most things in his life, this apparently was actually not true according to leaked documents. Because as you can see here, it says that rather than having an honourable discharge, it says that Onision actually had a general discharge. And rather than the reason of Onision simply wanting to spare a little bunny rabbit, it was actually because the man just absolutely loved poop. No, it wasn't that. I'm not bringing poo up again. It's been like 30 minutes since we last made a poo joke when we're stopping with that. It was actually because Onision apparently made a video where he went in his... <laughs> <laughs> in his manager or superior officer's office and danced around naked in the office and he uploaded this onto his YouTube channel. And yeah, pretty much apparently the military were not happy with this. So I'm not 100% on, I guess, the complete facts here. But it seems that Gregory was uploading a lot of anti-military stuff and again, that includes running around his, his superior's offices naked. And um, yeah, apparently this got him a general discharge, pretty much meaning that he got kicked out of the military and he did not get any benefits with that whereas as an honorable discharge it would mean that he was removed for a honorable reason and he would still be able to get benefits from leaving the military like most veterans would and i think this was a big thing for a lot of people out there because lying about your position in the military is a very sensitive thing because a lot of people as much as i can make jokes are very proud when it comes to the military they like to think that it earns and garners a lot of respect and if you think that completely fair enough and i think this is why a a lot of people out there were very much upset with this part of the Onision law because yeah lying about being in a certain part of the military or lying about how you got kicked out of the military is well it's a pretty just stupid thing to do because not only are you just outright lying which is a wrong thing to do but also just the people that don't like the military but the people that also love the military 
Well, they're both gonna finally unite in hating you, Onision, and that's something that very much <laughs> happened in this situation, because it made people think, wow, this guy is even more insane than I actually thought. But ladies and gentlemen, I didn't need the military to tell me that this guy was insane. All I needed to do was go onto his SoundCloud, because yes, of course, of course Onision has music and has a SoundCloud. This man over the years has become a little bit famous, well not famous, this man has been famous for some of his songs, as we mentioned earlier, the Banana Song, but sadly it did not end there. Over the years Onision has produced and written multiple hit pieces, such as The Lady of My Life, the cancel culture song, Onision is dead, the rejection song, and of course, the modern cult classic of, uh, I'm a stinky duck. Yes, these songs were absolute hits with multiple, um, free likes per song. Uh, yeah, they were absolutely banging in, in, in the charts. You're probably thinking, well, can, can I hear some of these tunes? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, I've been making this video for so long, and I am not going to poison my brain by playing I'm a Stinky Duck by Onisio. Do, do, do you really think that I've got the time and even the energy at this point to listen to the Pooh Man singing about why he's a stinky duck? I know why this man's a stinky duck, because he's got the habit of rubbing poo all over his back. So, with that... We should move on, because yes, all you really need to know is Onision makes music, and at one point of time, he even tried to make music videos for kids, and... Jesus Christ. This man creating content for children is the last thing that this planet needs. So with that, let's move on to this man. Some guy 827 slash Stevie Wolf. And pretty much, Stevie Wolf was Anision's original antagonist. This was the guy who originally, before Repsion, went up against Gregory and called this man out. There were pretty much debates and videos out there between the two, of where Stevie Wolf, even back in like 2013, was calling out Gregory for his actions. It very much seemed that this guy was like, <laughs> without sounding degrading, the prototype of Repsion, and I only say the prototype because Repsion, obviously, to this day, is still continuously criticizing Onision, whereas Stevie Wolf, I, I think he's kind of faded off, I think he kind of got bored of the man, and honestly, I, I can't blame the bloke, and uh, yeah, he pretty much was known for criticizing Onision, just like how I was, and every other internet commentator at one point. With that, though, we move on to the next part, which again references some form of debate, or I guess stream, of where it says, the 20th of June 2017 stream, and then there was also another reference to another stream on this iceberg, and honestly, I'm not exactly sure what this reference is here, but I think it is a reference to some kind of debate stream Onision went on, because you'll kind of notice throughout this iceberg there are a lot of references to debate streams that Onision did with content creators that don't particularly like him, but honestly, that's not really rare, considering I don't really think there is a creator that does like actually like him, but um, yeah. Pretty much, Onision went on a lot of debates in his time to kind of uh, plead his case to kind of uh, sway some heads and honestly it, it never really worked and it's a bit of a task to actually get a hold of these streams so um yeah we'll just skip ahead here and uh, get into the next part of this absolute mess. Randy Daniel and Tammy Jackson. Now you may be wondering who these people are but if you do have a little bit of a brain cell and if you have been listening to this video for you know longer than a minute you would probably realize that by these names that of course these are Onision's parents. Now I've briefly brought them up throughout this video because pretty much over the history of time Onision has spoken about in particular his dad and just said how his parents pretty much just completely outright mistreated him but it does kind of seem that his parents over the years have been clapping back they've been putting out the the the, the truth behind Onision out there where they have said that Onision just in general was a bit of a dick towards them and Gregory in past has actually threatened his dad and his mum and also threatened to do things such as burning down the house and honestly I don't really know who to believe here because to be honest with you when you look at somebody like Gregory and you look at his past and look at how this man's just conducted himself on the internet over the last 15 years. I mean, I, I can't really deny that there probably are some reasons that have caused him to be like this. And I, I, I don't really think that um, family mistreatment is a far-fetched reason to have caused him to be a certain way. Obviously, that's no justification for the crimes he may or may not have committed, as I have to say legally. But I do think that there probably is some truth behind what Onision has said about his parents in the past. And given some of the things that we're going to go through towards the bottom of the iceberg, which is so, which some of the main reasons why this iceberg 
Greg is just truly horrific. And I'm, I'm kind of inclined to actually believe Greg. But at the same time, I also kind of believe his parents in saying that Greg also probably has done and said some nasty things to them, such as burning down the house. Because, you know, burning down a house is never a good thing to do. And I think it actually would upset people if you did that. And uh, talking of upsetting people, we can smoothly move into the next part of Kai is crying now ladies and gentlemen this is an absolute classic of course uh, all the kids know about this one this is a big old meme on the internet which you definitely know of course you don't this is again some really more obscure and you see on law which i don't think more than 20 people know about but pretty much it references to a live stream that anision was in with sarah and billy where i'm pretty sure he was just debating with sarah about the situation at the time of when sarah and anision were kind of going at each other's throats exposing each other left right and center and anision actually kicked Sarah off this stream. And why did Onision do this? Well, it was because Kai was actually getting really upset that Sarah was speaking about, oh, the truth about what happened to her. She was crying, and Onision used her emotions and tears as a way to get Sarah out of the stream and just completely outright silence a victim, just because he's a really lovely bloke. But yeah, that's pretty much an explanation for that. Kai was getting upset, and Onision loves to use people's trauma. Well, not, I say trauma. It, I don't know if it's trauma. You can't really say that. He, he likes to use emotions as a way to manipulate his audience. And it's something that he's done over the course of time in multiple situations. And this was just another one of when Billy was speaking to Sarah about what happened to her. I'm pretty sure that I actually got the names mixed up then. But um, I do have to clarify that Billy was the one that was kicked off the live stream. And the only reason I'm getting mixed up with the names here is because, well, it, it turned out that both Sarah and Billy were horrifically mistreated by Onision and Kai. So, to be honest with you, it's pretty easy to get names mixed up when they've had the exact same horrific things happen to them. But with that, we move on from Greg's emotional manipulation to the next part, which is uh, um, skin disease? Pretty much Gregory has claimed over the years that he has, like, multiple weird health issues, I guess. And Gregory claiming to have some weird incurable skin disease is something that he's actually said multiple times. And honestly, I I'm not really sure about what the skin condition could possibly be. But yeah, people have speculated over this, saying is he lying? Is he not lying? To be honest with you, I, I don't know why Gregory would lie about having an incurable skin disease. It, it's not like it wins him any brownie points on the internet. He doesn't get anything to gain from it. But uh, yeah, apparently he's got dodgy skin. I mean, so have you probably and so definitely have I. Actually not. My skin's really clear right now. Are you jealous? Probably. But with your jealousy, you should um subscribe. I don't know where, where the correlation comes from there, but let's move on to the next part of LOL Be Mad. This again is just more random obscure Anision knowledge, which honestly will not affect your life in any way, shape or form. Pretty much Anision in the past shared his messages with Billy, where he was trying to once again use his platform to betray somebody to be a bad person. And in the text, you can see he says, LOL Be Mad. Apparently this became a little bit of a meme in the Anision community or anti-Anision community. I'm, I'm not really too sure but um yeah it seems when gregory says something a little bit i guess silly or goofy people like to take it and, and use it as as, as a meme I, I i don't really know there are some things on this iceberg where i am kind of looking and thinking did this need to be on here? And this is honestly one of those times. But I guess it can just represent another case of Anision using his platform as a way to discredit an ex who speaks up against him, which is something that the bloke just absolutely loves to do. But then let's move on to the next part, which is the Leafy is here response. And pretty much this is just, I guess, in reference again to Leafy and Anision having their big old beef with each other. Because yeah, the two seemingly did not like each other. But at the same time, there was like a little bit of a, um, I guess, a rumor that Anision, just like how he liked to uh, lips Shane Dawson, also kind of wanted to give maybe Leafy a little bit of a smooch. People kind of debate him, <laughs> do these two have a little connection going on? And honestly, if Leafy and Anision ended up in like some weird thing together, that would, <laughs> that would be the end of this website. And not, not for any like weird reason. But yeah, and he still responded to Leafy. I don't think the response is even still on the internet at this point. And people just absolutely clowned on him because, you know, the Hiss Nation or whatever they were called, Leafy's fan base. 
I mean, they were dedicated to the bloke. And honestly, the first fan base that really first stood up to Onision, and if you don't like Leafy, I mean, fair enough, but if there's one thing we can give the bloke credit to, is he was like one of the first people that made the general public aware that this Gregory bloke is just absolutely insane. And YouTube, I'm not saying that in a bullying sense, I'm just saying based on everything here, I mean, the bloke rubbed poo on his back. I mean, surely that's not me being mean, that's just me saying rubbing poo on your back isn't necessarily a normal human thing to do. Let's move on to Gregory's family once again, and we're gonna kind of, kind of combine this into one big one here. You've got Greg's sister, or family stuff to do with his sisters, and it just pretty much just refers to the fact that, oh yeah, Gregory has a sister. I don't know if this needed to be on here, but I guess it is somewhat lore to Onision. He's got a sister. The sister's appeared in a vlog in the past and uh, seemingly disappeared ever since, probably because she realized, oh, my brother's a little bit wacky, isn't he? But then we also then move on to the next part of the family section of uh, Gregory beats up his dad, and uh, pretty much this just refers to the things we were speaking about previously with the family. Uh, Gregory has spoken a lot in the past, as I've said, about how he did not get on with his dad, and at one point of time, he eventually stood up to his dad and just smacked him in the gabba, said, mate, you are one big old bellend, and he in the face, or something like that. Pretty much, he just had a fight with his dad and absolutely just decimated him, and it even got Anision into Juvenile Hall prison? Um, I think this is like some youth detention center for Americans, uh, American youth. I, I'm not, I'm not really too sure on the specifics here. I live in a country where we don't really tend to imprison children unless they do something horrific. But yeah, this is something that happened to Gregory. He did not get on with his dad, and I feel like this was meant to be the boiling point between them. And yeah, it can kind of explain a lot about Gregory, his relationship with his parents, because seemingly it has affected him a lot. A lot! A lot. I kind of had to emphasize there because, it, it, yeah, his, his whole relationship with his family, I, I just feel like this is one of the main reasons to why he does the things that he does. Obviously, again, it's not a justification, but usually somebody's shitty actions can reflect on their childhood, and I think that's obviously what we've got in this situation, case, iceberg thing. But yeah, now we have actually reached the very bottom of the bottom of the iceberg, and I feel like this part of the iceberg was just more rather obscure information compared to outright horrific things that we've gone through at the top of the iceberg, and honestly, you know, I, I don't think this was the worst part of the section. In fact, I feel like out of every part of the iceberg, this is genuinely the more pleasant part, <laughs> if you can consider Anishion, uh, smacking his dad in the gabba a pleasant thing. Is gabba even a word? I don't know. It now is. Put that in the comment section down below. But pretty much, yes, we have reached the bottom of the iceberg. And with that, I feel like we we really need to just kind of um, have a little bit of a break and say how we feeling. <laughs> how, how are we really feeling? Because honestly, I'm, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Um, I, but then again, maybe I lost it just when I started researching this. And it's honestly more because of what comes after this. Because yes, you may be thinking, oh, we're at the bottom of the iceberg? Surely, surely. Surely that's the ending. Sadly not, because now we must enter the abyss. <sighs> that's, um, let's just, I'm not even going to give you like an introduction. Let's just get into this. This is just more obscure information that only extremely mentally ill people need to know. And if you're at this section thinking, I'm not mentally ill, congratulations, mate. You've just been diagnosed. Fox News. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, goes all the way back to the year 2010. Yes, the year of the World Cup and vi 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 I can't say the word. Vuvuzelas. Lots of wonderful things happened in this year, such as me getting banned from RuneScape and you... I don't know, um, enjoying the trailer to Toy Story 3? Oh my god, I have just discovered the trailer came out in 2009. Wow, I am, I'm really old. I'm gonna die soon. But also in 2010, some more tragic things happened, such as the Haiti earthquake disaster. And with a disaster like this, humanity usually does like to kind of get together as a collective and do its bit in helping the people that are truly suffering. And Onision seemingly actually was somebody that tried to help, and he put up a fundraiser onto his YouTube channel where he pretty much 
encouraged his uh, viewers to donate to this fundraiser and apparently that fundraiser would then be donated to the charities that are helping out in Haiti. But weirdly enough, uh, this, this ended up in controversy with Greg because Fox News, of all people, made a, a like a show or a, a news coverage report about people who were creating fake, I guess, fundraisers for, for, for Haiti and saying that these people were scammers. And when they were speaking about the scam... <laughs> <laughs> they showed Anision's video, and I, I guess they were, like, alleging that Gregory was one of these people um, stealing from charity, which, I mean, if true, would have obviously been an absolutely horrible thing. And honestly, I'd like to say I don't know why Fox News would lie about that, but you could apply that to a lot of different situations, because Fox News are f terrible, like the worst of the absolute worst. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? So in this case of time, I wouldn't be surprised if they did just try and completely lie about a YouTuber or some terrible researcher that they had just got something completely wrong because that really wouldn't be that much of a coincidence when it came to Fox News. And this even led to a petition being <laughs> being made saying that Fox News must apologize. And it got the whopping amount of support of six supporters. And uh, yeah, Gregory was clearly very, very upset by this because he also made his own, own YouTube video. And honestly, I'd say I, I don't know why Fox News did this, but again, you can say that about pretty much any situation with Fox News ever. Blair White, <laughs> sorry, Greg. Now, uh, I only want to stay on this thing for like, a, like a, a few seconds, so I'm just going to try and get through this one as quick as possible. Pretty much Blair White made a tweet where she posted an image which is drawn of Gregory and her doing something. And Gregory actually called her out on this, where he said, is this a gender-related thing? Would you do this if it was somebody else who wasn't a man? And, uh, yeah, to be honest with you, Gregory actually makes a good point when he called them out on this, because the image was depicting Blair and Onision doing an action, which Onision didn't consent to this photo being made, and I can actually understand why he would complain about this thing, and that's why I'm not actually fully showing this image, because yeah, I think it's one time Gregory has actually made a pretty valid criticism. But talking of criticism, we then move on to sock accounts on Twitter and Kiwi Farms. So yeah, the internet obviously loves criticizing Onision to the point of where we are now watching, or you are now watching, a two-hour video speaking about Onision and a big old iceberg. And with that, it comes these sock accounts. And what is a sock account? Pretty much, it's like a fake account, like an account ran by somebody that is being used to defend that same person. And Gregory, over the years, has been accused of making fake accounts to go onto forums dedicated to him and defend himself. As you can see from here, these posts are pretty much people working out if a sock account is Gregory or not and yeah I, I don't think there's ever been any direct proof that Gregory has been making fake accounts because I mean I don't think he's that silly to let that information slip but people out there have theorized about this saying is this Gregory I think I found another Enision sock account and honestly it would probably be one of the least shocking things to think that yes this man at one point of time probably created a fake account of himself to defend his horrific actions and I don't think you can directly say that these people are right in saying that these are definitely sock accounts I think it's just more of the um the sheer disbelief that any human being would ever be insane enough to defend Anision. And that's really only backed by the next part of this iceberg, because yes, we move on to Mocking Cutter. And you, you, you can kind of get what this is going into, pretty much, to say it in like a... A, a TOS friendly thing. Onision mocked people out there who self-inflicted pain on themselves. He made a lot of tweets in the past where he just called these people uh, attention seekers and, and pretty much it offended a lot of people and rightly so. And I, I think it's strange that this man is calling out people for seeking attention when this is the man who is notoriously known for having fake breakdowns where he rubs poo on his back. Like, Gregory, you can't talk talk about this, my friend. You are like an actual man baby, a piss baby. You are the biggest attention seeker on the internet, mate. You cannot call people out for attention seeking, whether you think they are or not. But obviously, what he said in these tweets are absolutely disgusting. But sadly, 
this is really, and I'm not just saying this to be funny, the, the tip of the iceberg. Because these are two segments here, which we will go into further down the line, but these are more examples of Gregory just being outright disrespectful and disgusting. And in my opinion, doing this to get attention, but... That's later on in this iceberg. Let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's actually get into the next part. Hater FAQ. Now, what actually is Hater FAQ? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is when a man who was almost 30 years old made an entire encyclopedia and explanation to his private relationship drama. Yes, he made an entire FAQ-based website of where he simply explained everything, I guess, going on with him and, and Shiloh or Sky or however this man was dating at this period of time in 2012. This was a genuine thing that he did. And you, again, you have to take into context this man's age. It, it's genuinely embarrassing that somebody in his mid-twenties would make something like this. But you know what's even more embarrassing? It's when somebody in their first Thirties makes this suck me. Huh? Oh, I, I just shouted. Well, not shouted, but I said that louder than I ex expected to. And my girlfriend is in the room behind me, and she probably heard that. And I think I can hear a suitcase. <laughs> He's being packed. What is Suck Me? Well, pretty much, I'm, I'm having to whisper it, but it's a song where Gregory had pretty much requested people to perform certain acts. And I will read you the lyrics right now. Gregory says, and I'm saying this quietly because I... I don't want anybody to hear me saying this. He says, I have a little pecker. You have, I say, I, oh, it doesn't say little. That was actually just me instinctively adding that. I have a pecker. You have a mouth. So let's make a connection from your north to my south. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do something which Gregory would deem. That was edgy. <laughs> Moving on to the next part. Snail Mail Stalker. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this goes back to Repsion, because pretty much in the past, Denision made a video where he called out a stalker, saying somebody was making multiple different videos speaking about him, and in fact, Gregory claimed in the video that that same stalker sent mail to his family to tell his family members the stuff that Gregory had actually done. And yeah, this was speculated at the time of release to be Repsion, because, I mean, at that point of time, the only one who was really making multiple videos on, on, on Gregory was Repsion, and in fact, that led to Repsion responding, clarifying that yes, the person Gregory was speaking about was indeed him, but rather than sending a mail letter, he sent a Facebook message to the family members to tell them what Onision had done. And honestly, I, I don't really think that's that bad of a thing. I think family members have a true right to know if your family member is doing suspicious and possible illegal things. In fact, I think everybody has kind of a right to know that sort of information. <coughs> Sorry about that. What I was trying to say here is I think that all family members and friends and just in general everybody have a right to know if somebody is up to illegal activity, mainly for moral reasons. While personally I would not want to associate with somebody like Onision, but also I don't want to go down as an accomplice. I do not want to be associated with somebody like Gregory, so I would like to distance myself. And I think by Repsion telling the family members, they would have the opportunity to do so without being get, I, I get without getting like the, the guilt by association treatment, which I think they may have got if they didn't distance himself. And going back to Greg's sister earlier, it seems that his family have outright just, I guess, cut contact. You don't really hear much about them anymore, bar a few videos from a few years ago. But yeah, that is the snail mail stalker, and, and apparently that was... Repsion. But with that, we then move on to the next part, which of course is Greg having a tumor on his back. Now you may be thinking, Fraser, <laughs> what? Like what? Okay, so apparently Gregory has claimed in the past that he has a tumor on his back, but the tumor is actually not cancerous. It's just a fatty tumor. The big old fatty on his back. I can't say that. I, I, look, I, I was once 300 pounds and I'm, I'm not on Gregory's back, all right? I've actually put on weight recently because I've been eating a lot making this video, so... I, I, you can tell it's getting quite late into this video. I am just saying things which are just going to get me into trouble. Pretty much Gregory has a fatty tumor on his back, which he claims anyway. And people out there kind of speculate whether this is true or not. I don't really know. And honestly, I don't really think that I actually care about this piece of information. In fact, why is this on the iceberg? He's got a lump of fat. Don't we all? 
you know, you eat your Christmas dinner, you might get a lump of fat. It's perfectly normal. Let's move on to a, 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 a another interaction Gregory has had on the internet, and rather than tumours and stuff like that, with um, Shay Carl. So this is when Gregory one day just decided to get outraged at something. Well, I, to be fair, I, 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 this is, I guess, a controversial topic. Gregory got outraged at Shay Carl because Shay Carl's child was actually circumcised, and he accused Shay Carl of, of actually being an abuser, and he made tons of angry posts about this, and this again is another scenario where Onision seemingly cut ties with somebody who at one stage of time actually seemed to think that Gregory was somewhat of a normal bloke. And I think if there's one thing to take from it is uh, irony. I think it's rather ironic that Gregory of all people is going to call somebody out for abuse, especially after everything. I, I, I feel like I keep saying especially after everything, but it mainly is because there is just so much absolute insane stuff in this, and with that accusation of abuse, we move back into Anision's previous relationships with five years of Almany. Almany. Al Almany? Almany. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but pretty much this is once again going back to something we previously spoke about, where Gregory was forced to make certain payments to his ex-wife via their divorce. This is a pretty normal thing to go through. If you don't have a prenup, you may have to pay up. That wasn't me being a rapper, but that did sound pretty good. Pretty much, yeah. You've got to pay up sometimes in a divorce, and Gregory was one of those people. And when it got to the five-year period, he was getting very, very upset. Even calling his ex-wife, as I mentioned earlier, a B-I-T-C-H. And if you thought that was gross, well, my friends... Let's get into the next one, because it gets even more gross, with your emo problems rise above it. Now this is something that Nision has desperately tried to outright nuke from the internet. It kind of seems that all archived versions of this video, because this is what it is, it is a video that Nision uploaded years ago, and it seems that this video has been outright nuked, and the only actual, I think, source of this video that still exists on the internet is in this video from here, from, from four years- oh. Oh, it's me. Hello, me. Yeah, I spoke about this years ago in a video where I spoke about Anision's channel dying and why it died, and I guess this is pretty much an extended version of that video back when I made 20 minute long videos. Wasn't that a better time? God, this YouTube algorithm is insufferable. But yes, what I'm speaking about in that video is a video series that Anision used to have where his audience would send in questions where they would ask for advice on certain things that they needed help with in their lives, and somebody actually messaged into Anision saying that they were depressed and going through a very hard time in their life, and they were actually getting thoughts that made them want to take their own life. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> how did Anision respond in this uh, video? Well, he said... I don't think you can blame the thoughts you're having on anyone <laughs> but yourself. And the only reason I'm laughing at this is just because it's it's so insane, especially when you consider Gregory at this point of time definitely had a very young and impressionable audience. So when that young person is emailing in saying, I'm very sad and lonely and depressed, Gregory's first thought, even if he just was thinking that, his first thought was to actually say that. Gregory... You could just lie and say something nice, being like, it's, it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better. But no, Gregory had to go on the offensive and it was like, it's, it's, it's your fault. It's your fault. He actually brings up the fact that this person doesn't get on with their family. It's something that they said in their request. And he, he, he still just pins it on the person. And I'm just thinking, wow, you are like... An, a nasty dude, like an actual nasty dude. Look, if you take away all the criminal actions, he at heart is still just a bad bloke. But then we move on to the kill stream, which again was just another, I guess, debate that Onision went on. And I think, again, these debates are hard to get a hold of. It, it kind of seems that that, again, is a familiar pattern when it comes to this guy. He'll go on a debate. The debate will just be erased from the internet and that'll be that so with that we just simply move on to the next part which is kai and greg are on welfare now this is something which i'm not really too sure what actually this means to be honest with you i don't know if they're on some form of government funding scheme of where they don't have enough money to live so the government 
give them some pennies. I, again, that's not even me being mean. It, the government probably do just literally give pennies on, on any form of welfare scheme. Or it could be to do with the fact that if you get a general discharge from the military, you are not entitled to certain veteran benefits, which I mentioned earlier. Honestly, I, I, I'm not too sure. I don't really know what this means by Craig and Kai being on welfare. But either way, I wouldn't be surprised if they were on some form of scheme that gives them money every month because they don't have a certain amount of income coming into their household because it, it does seem that Gregory has no money. I mean, at this point, I think he's lost so much money from the wetlands situation and other things out there, such as him having to pay his ex-wife a lot of money. But that kindly moves us in to the next part, a very personal part, which is impacting this video to this day and making my editor have to edit onions on top of this bloke. Pretty much, this is Greg censoring others. And by censoring, it means Gregory loves to copyright claim a lot of people out there. Gregory, over the years, for like four years now, has just been called out for his abuse of the YouTube copyright system, or where somebody will make a video fairly using fair use, and he will still claim their video and actually make money from their own video. And it's really weird to me, considering this guy has been demonetized on YouTube, but he's still able to abuse this system. It's genuinely so utterly frustrating, and I've been complaining about this for over four years now. <laughs> YouTube are just like, nope, no, we don't care. No, 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 we've got NFTs now. Well, release the Greg NFT if you really want to do some good in the world, because maybe maybe that will make things... No, it won't. Just just fix this system so I don't have to keep doing this every time I make a Blimmin' Anision video. Pretty much, the reason I think this says that it's censoring people out there is because it does make people, I guess, less interested in covering Onision and making Onision content, because YouTube, for a lot of people, is their jobs, and as much as they do have passion for making their videos, they also need to be paid. And if they're making a video which they're spending days, if not weeks, possibly months on, like, like this video, they're going to be, I guess, disinterested in making that video because they don't want to make a video and, and, and not be able to pay rent. And I think Gregory knows that, so he kind of wins twice here. Not only does he get people's money, but he also stops them from making videos covering his horrific actions. And YouTube, the only thing I can say here is please, please just fix this system because it's so unbelievably flawed and I cannot believe it's still like this. Four years later. But with annoying websites, that kindly moves us in to Mr. Odd. Now you may be thinking, well, who actually is Mr. Odd? Well, you're looking at him right now. This is Mr. Odd right here. Yes, this was the profile name that Onision used to go by before he was actually called Onision. And he also used to have a website called Mr. Odd. And pretty much, it was the exact same thing that his YouTube channels are in the modern day. It was just him being very weird and very, very concerning and uploading content which to a general regular person would absolutely terrify you. And as much as Mr. Odd has kind of been purged from the internet, there are actually some very, very old videos that do still exist out there from 2004 of Mr. Odd. And I think these are actually some of the oldest forms of video-based content of Onision, and when you look back at them, they're genuinely just mind-blowing, because it's kind of like a time capsule in a weird way, because in these videos, way back 18, 19 years ago, he is exactly the same to how he is now. In 2004, he was very strange, and in 2023, his persona, his personality, how he is in those videos, is, is, is pretty much exactly the same. A lot of content creators out there seem to have humble beginnings, content which looks so different to what it is now in the modern day, but Gregory is just one of those rare cases of where the man since day one has just been bad. And I think it's kind of a testament to his character in a weird way, and I think it does show that the man isn't fake. He's just, well, what a bit of a... A bit of an oddball. And then we move into Salsa, and uh, honestly, I can't lie, I, I genuinely found nothing to do with Salsa when it came to Onision. I, I searched for advanced tweet searches to possibly find something, but no, I, I, I couldn't find anything. I don't know if Onision has some form of love for Salsa, maybe he does, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's all I can really say here. So let's move on to 
Tosh Zero. Now, before Onision was mainly connected to mainstream media by the host of To Catch a Predator, Onision was originally connected to the mainstream media by Tosh Zero, which is a Comedy Central show hosted in America, where a guy called Daniel Tosh will pretty much react to internet-based topics and videos and speak about things that are trending on the internet. I don't know anyone else that does that, um, but if, if that ever becomes a career path in the future, let me know, because I'd really like to be involved. But ladies and gentlemen, the reason that this is on the iceberg is because, yes, Anision's hit song classic, I'm a Banana, actually featured on this show, because yes, the presenter reacted to it, and I believe actually gave a lot of traction towards Onision. Yes, Comedy Central are to pretty much blame for everything that we have dealt with today. If you want to submit your complaints to Comedy Central, honestly, I would not blame you, but um, <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to the rest of the Stumpster Fire, which is, of course, Ninja Troll. Now, my friends, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I feel like this is the most disappointing part of the entire iceberg. I thought this whole bit was gonna be like, oh, Anision one time in 2017 trolled the king of Fortnite or something like that. He did a little, did a little goofy gaff on the man that plays troll, troll, troll night, Fortnite with blue hair. That guy, uh, Ninja. But no, all this refers to is pretty much just a random clip of Onision just being a, a, a little weirdo that he usually is, and he just starts screaming things, and one of them is ninja trolling. I'm not even going to play the clip, because honestly, I don't feel like poisoning your brains today, and I have been recording for far too long to react to a clip of Onision being whatever Onision actually is. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually getting really tired <laughs> at this point. Like, if I start saying things which is, is just completely silly and makes no sense, it's because I, I've said it quite a few times, but I think I've fully cracked. I think I have lost my absolute mind at this point. I have con I've consumed too much information about one man that, that, that there should not be this amount of information about. And uh, but let's just let's just move away from Ninja Trolling or Comedy Central and move into the next one, which is the Steve Wilco show with the amazing atheist. Now pretty much Steve Wilco has a show and occasionally he will have people on and apparently Steve Wilco and the amazing atheist pretty much wanted to set up a yet again another debate between Onision and the amazing atheist. And it seemed that at first it was gonna go ahead and if you don't know who the amazing atheist is, he is an atheist who is apparently, allegedly, um, 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 amazing. And yeah, they were going to have a debate, but apparently it fell through because the amazing atheist chose not to. And Ision got very, very upset at this, and then eventually he himself admitted that he lost interest in this. Honestly, I do feel like this is... This is, like, information which... Do we really need to know this? Like, honestly, is, is this something that should be in an iceberg? I don't think this is an iceberg. I feel like this is a penguin that walks on top of the iceberg. This, this is not worthy of being in the abyss. But apparently, it's in the abyss. So let's move on to something a little bit... <laughs> sorry, I'm getting really annoyed. A little bit more worthwhile. And that is Encyclopedia Dramatica. Now, pretty much, this is a troll archive which seemingly just archives information about Onision, kind of like a wiki page, and I'm not, I'm not too sure on the extent of how accurate the information was that they posted about Onision, but Gregory got very, very upset at this website, and he made a lot of angry statements out there about it, just in general complaining about the entire archive, and saying how it, pretty much it absolutely sucked, and it was <laughs> really bad. And I find that really confusing that this man would get upset that there are archives out there about him, considering this man literally wrote an archive about his own relationships. Like, Gregory, you, you, you can't have your cake and eat it. You've got to share it every now and again. And uh, if, if you're going to write FAQs about your relationship, expect other people to make FAQs. But then, ladies and gentlemen, we get on to the final part of the abyss. And that is Cameo in Psychic Pebbles cartoon. Yeah, apparently he featured in some Psychic Pebbles cartoon. I, I don't know if I'm, like, not cultured with the internet, but I don't know what Psychic Pebbles is, and maybe people are now going to get extremely mad at me. But apparently he featured in a cartoon. But the problem is, is I could not find this cartoon anywhere. It seems that it's been completely wiped from the internet, and that's probably because Psychic Pebbles did not want to be even remotely associated with this man. But yes, that is actually the bottom of the abyss. We have gone through the top and gotten to the bottom, and that is absolutely everything here. Honestly, yes, there were some slightly more messed up things in this category compared to the ones previously, but I still don't think that this was the absolute worst of the worst, and you're probably thinking, well, how can it get lower than the abyss? Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, I must present to you yet again one more tier, and that is hell.
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached... Oh, God, can this just end? Please. Who made this so big? Why is... That's what she said. But who? why is this so long? Again, that's what she said. But why is this so big? I, I'm not helping myself here. Should we just get into the first part of this iceberg iceberg section? Yes, let's do that. And it is the breakup with Seer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we are going to be dealing with Onision seemingly wanting to smooch somebody else. Because yes, Onision and Seer, who is another YouTuber, used to be good friends at one point. They had a lot of collaborations out there. But sadly, ladies and gentlemen, that all came to a end when apparently yes they broke up over the 2016 election because the moral beacon that he is Anision got very upset when Sir actually announced that he would be voting for a third party because he did not like Hillary Clinton and he certainly did not like Donald Trump so his you know uh, ultimate opinion was I'm gonna vote for a third party and yes Gregory was not very happy with that he said that this is pretty much an absolutely awful thing to do and it led to those two having a massive Twitter feud and getting very very angry at each other and just resulting in pretty much them having a tragic breakup yes I know you're holding your tears back right now this is truly <laughs> devastating information Information. I just want them to get back together. Yeah, uh, I don't think anybody out there was shipping Sierra and Anision, but if they actually were, please, I hope you are in a mental asylum. I realized throughout this entire video why I've definitely been stigmatizing mental illness and, you know, making people feel probably very bad about themselves. And honestly, I don't know if I feel bad. Because I feel bad for myself after everything that I've gone through today. Let's just get into the next part, which, again, is to do with friendship. It's the Ghost Skin Association. And this name may get you a little bit worried. You may start to get a bit creeped out. Are we going to go down some dark paths? Well... Well, actually, no, this is one of the more ordinary things Greg has ever done, and it actually goes back to his Mr. Odd website, because Greg used to run a ghost hunting group with his friends, and as you can see, that there are some photos here. They were like any other teenager, you know, you'd see an orb in a photo, and you'd think, oh, that's possibly a ghost, when in reality, it was just a 2004 camera being a 2004 disposable camera. It was, it was nothing, it was not a ghost, it was just some sh camera taking a shitty photo but alas to be fair this looks like a cool website to me it actually is quite nostalgic and yeah i feel like this is probably one of the more ordinary things in this entire uh, archive but i can understand this being towards the bottom of the iceberg because once again this goes before onision this is in 2004 this is mr odd this is the og era only the true onision stands know this stuff and if there are onision stands I sure th am sure that they are being monitored by the CIA. Hello, Margaret. This basically just continues into the deep, dark, terrifying past of Onision because, yes, once again, this goes before Onision and it goes back to Mr. Odd and Sakeska. Basically, this was an email posted on the Sakeska website where he seemingly self admits to being a sociopath. I mean, you didn't need to tell us, and he also admits to feeling godlike. And I'm not really sure what god it is, maybe it's, it's just this guy, I don't know, but either way, he was certainly feeling like a god, and even in this paragraph, he admits that at one point of time, even back then, people were starting to call him crazy, and yeah, this was an email that he apparently wrote out to Margaret, which for some reason was posted on his Sakeska website, I guess because he wanted this information to be revealed to his uh, uh, weird, freaky cult audience. I don't actually know of anybody other than him participated in Sakeska, but guessing by the existence of this Margaret person, there must have been another person. In fact, if anybody was indoctr indoctrinated into this cult and you are watching this right now, please email me. My business email is down below. I would love to chat with you about this cult and maybe we can get some form of weird interview going about this and maybe make a video. I don't know because I, I would genuinely love to deep dive into this even further because this whole thing that he was running this Sakeska thing genuinely actually is one of the more interesting things for me throughout this entire iceberg so if you know anything else please get in contact with me but with that let's continue okay we well, this is uh this is this is rep sock and <laughs> this is like honestly one of the more entertaining things that Gregory has done pretty much Gregory one day decided to invent a new character with a sock puppet and uh, yeah the sock puppet was pretty much meant to be Repsion if you couldn't tell and what Onision did with Repsock was he actually had a little debate with himself in a video and I think this was because Repsion wanted to have a live conversational debate with Repsion and Onision obviously didn't want to do that because you know Repsion would outright expose him so instead he chose to go down the uh, the, the path and route 
Brute of Mockery, which he likes to do a lot, as you can see throughout this video, and Repsock became a thing. And actually, throughout Anision's fan base, this became a big meme. There were a lot of images back in 2013 and 14 using Pokemon to make Repsock memes. And to be fair, at face value, this is, you know, like one of the more harmless things that he's done. But then you kind of have to add in the context of, oh, he's, he's, he's doing this to deflect from serious, serious allegations. And then it kind of, you know, it kind of gets a bit depressing. But if you look at it at face value, Repsock is definitely something which shows that this guy is, yes, absolutely insane. Do you think I was going to be nice? No, no, no. This is just as insane as pretty much everything else. Again, I have to reiterate, the bloke was like 30 at this point of time. Don't you have a mortgage to be paying or a kid to, you know, not let fall out of the window? Greg tries to make his own personal 4chan army. So pretty much this is a theory, kind of like all the sock theories, and, and not the rep sock theories, but the sock theories that Onision created and um, accounts to defend himself. And apparently people believe that Gregory made a 4chan post under an anonymous username where he said, Onision is getting me tooed. He needs help. Girl claims to have been underage during their relations. This is B. Yes, Anision would never be that dumb. Which is quite ironic, because if Gregory has written this, I mean, you definitely would be that dumb, mate. Because, I mean, for one, y y you've literally admitted to um to having at least some form of romantic t connections to minors in the past. I mean, you dubbed it as the, the last person you spoke to romantically when they were a teenager or minor. But either way, you, you have admitted to it in the past, so y you definitely would be that silly. Now, to be fair, there is no way of confirming this is actually Gregory. But, uh, you know, I, I guess people, again, are just very confused and shocked that somebody out there would actually go out of their way to not only create an account, but use that account to <laughs> defend Gregory. But not only defend Gregory, but defend Gregory on 4chan. But um, let's move on from that. Because, yeah, as you can tell, Greg did not uh, build his own personal 4chan army. Because, as you can see, he pretty much got told to, uh, in, in a polite way of saying it, get stuffed. So, uh, let's continue. Rogue. Now, this is genuinely one of the more strange scenarios. Pretty much, Rogue was a an, a, an imaginary child which was apparently invented in a fake scenario where Shiloh and Anision apparently posted that they had a child that passed away. And as I just said, the child did not even exist. This is a really confusing scenario because even now, I'm, I'm not really sure on what happened here. But yeah, Rogue was this imaginary baby that was, I guess, posted in these very suspicious posts, as you can see here. And people were suggesting that this original post was photoshopped, and a lot of people were just getting upset that Shiloh or Anision could have possibly used a photo of a real child and even pretended that that real child was dead and was their dead child. To this day, Onision and Shiloh have both come out and said that they did not do this. They do not know what this post was and where this post came from. And Onision himself has actually made videos videos, I guess, seemingly saying that he doesn't care if Shiloh did it or just outright defending Shiloh. But either way, this is a really weird thing. I don't understand this rogue story because it's just very confusing. Because firstly, why would anybody make this up? But secondly, you could just say, well, why would Shiloh do this? I mean, I can kind of get Onision, but at the end of the day, this is just... A really, really weird situation. And if you know more, maybe you can, like, correct me down below. But either way, no matter what, this is a bit of an odd moment. And I can get why this is lower on in the iceberg. Because this is a very... Very just strange situation, which I think has just been forgotten with time. But um, yeah, with that, let's continue to the next part, which is Greg vomiting on his couch. Now, I think this is a reference to, once again, the breakdown videos that Greg had where he, you know, absolutely lost his mind. And I think in the breakdown videos, Greg may have, uh, yeah, vomited over his couch. I mean, there are videos of him just going, oh. I shouldn't do that because... Some of you may be quite triggered by vomit. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I put a little sound there so you didn't hear the noise that I just made. But pretty much, Greg was making a lot of sick noises. It looked like he was going to spew all over everywhere, splooge all over. Uh, sorry, that I went too far there. Greg was not splooge. Um, uh, sorry. Basically, apparently, Greg threw up on his sofa, and it, it wasn't a pretty sight. But what was a pretty sight was 
Shrek. And, and not that guy, no, no, no. Well, kind of that guy. But Shrek as in the iceberg part of this Shrek thing. Um, trust me, there is a reason to why Shrek is on this. Pretty much only Sion got in a bit of controversy. There was a situation where something horrific happened in Texas. So I'm not going to say it once again for TOS reasons, but pretty much a lot of people were praying for victims in that situation. But Greg took it upon himself to put himself in the center of the situation. He got himself in there and made it about him because yes he went onto twitter and his first reaction was to clown on these people who were simply tweeting that they were praying for the victims in this situation and how did twitter respond to this well they tweeted photos of shrek and a fedora at him yeah i'm not really too sure about why and, and what was the point of this but this seemingly was the, <laughs> the response I, I i genuinely don't know why if you could explain to me because i've done the research i've looked into this i've had researchers do research into this and i'm, I'm still very confused but um yeah apparently behind the meme of this was shrek photos were tweeted at him in a way to i guess spam and annoy him because of these stupid statements that gregory made murder eaters now, my friends, this was the beginning of Gregory's vegetarian breakdowns. Yes, on his YouTube video, he uploaded a video titled Murder Eaters, where in this video, he pretty much just ranted at his audience and just outright called them out and was like, please unsubscribe if you eat meat because I do not want you on this channel. Because <laughs> he was pretty much saying that if you eat meat, you are like an abusive, terrible human being. And I'm like, Gregory, that's like the most ironic thing you have ever said to me. And this was actually one of the first controversies, major controversies that the bloke was involved in, which is saying a lot considering the amount of controversies this guy has been involved in the video has kind of gone down in like onision internet folklore now because yeah this was where he established himself as the vegetarian the goat of of veggies and that's where the vegetarian body came from basically if you eat meat you are a murderer in this guy's eyes that's quite ironic like really ironic in fact considering everything that we're now about to go into starting off with turtle murders. Now, this genuinely is one of the most messed up things Gregory has ever been involved in, and also one of the just outright stupid things this bloke has done. Pretty much, Gregory owned a turtle called Reptar, and what he did was he posted a plastic tub in the sun, and he said that he put Reptar in the sun so he could enjoy the weather without the dogs bugging him, and he left Reptar in there for hours to find out that the turtle had died. This is an actual thing. This wasn't a troll. The bloke who called everybody murderers for eating chicken dippers killed his own t I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. It's, it's actually really messed up, but it's just shocking how not only stupid this man is, but just how... Again, I get shocked at how he's still getting more and more awful. He also said that Reptar is a desert turtle, so he thought the heat wouldn't do the damage and that he had air. I mean, he clearly didn't have air. The, 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 it was clearly against the ground. There are no air holes in that tub. And it's not like he just randomly spontaneously combusted. That's not something that turtles are exactly privy to. They don't just randomly explode. He dies because of the heat and oxygen deprivation. That's what happened here. And Gregory was in a lot of controversy because of this. It's, it's genuinely one of the more grim things. I mean, just the state of the fact that he would actually post this on, on his Twitter account account and think that he'd get away with it i think it's honestly worse than actually hiding this story if he hid it maybe that would be a bit more of a human response but the fact he posted this makes me think my god you are even more nutty than i thought but then we move away from that sick incident to greg's scams now this is once again the allegation that greg has used gofundme as a way to i guess scam his audience rather than actually using donations for charitable causes he takes the donations and uses them for themselves like in the wetland situation but also allegedly in the haiti situation now i don't believe there is really any proof of this i'm not 100 percent too sure but either way this is definitely an accusation that onision has faced throughout his entire career and honestly after absolutely everything especially the last thing i mean i I wouldn't be shocked if these were real allegations because this bloke is a, is a is a dodgy dodgy human being and and the next section really 
really only solidifies that. And I, I don't want to stay on this next part for any longer than I need to, because it's just not only sensitive, but just, yeah, it's Christina... Grimmy. Now, pretty much, Christina Grimmy is a former YouTuber who was murdered. They had their life taken away from them in a disgusting, tragic, sad incident, and it honestly makes me a bit uncomfortable to speak about in this video, but yeah, this is something that happened, and people were naturally just praying for Christina. They were putting up their thoughts and prayers like anybody would in any tragic scenario and situation. But Greg took it upon himself to clown on all of the people that were praying for Christina. Look at these tweets here. This was his first instantaneous reaction. I'm not going to directly read what he said here because it's genuinely sick. And this is honestly some of the worst things, in my opinion, that this man has done. I know he's committed horrible criminal actions, but I think when you do something so disturbing yet it's not illegal, you must have truly done something morally wrong and I think this is one of those situations. He took people who were devastated, upset, used the murder of an innocent human being to just make the situation about himself. To get the attention on him, he had to say the worst possible things. And, it, and it's just a fine, yet yeah, another fine representation of how sick and twisted and messed up this man is and how he will go to any lengths to get attention. But the sickness doesn't end there when you move on to shock collars on the dogs. Now, this is just an allegation, pretty much. People have analyzed videos and photos of Anision's dogs, and they have compared them to actual photos of shock collars and have alleged that Anision's dogs have shock collars on them themselves. And if you're wondering what a shock collar is, pretty much it's a, a, a collar which will send a high volt, well, I don't know about high, but also send a certain amount of electronic voltage into a dog's neck as a form of punishment to train the dog into doing certain things that the owner wants it to do. And by the way, that's not training, that's punishing and bullying and stressing a dog into only doing a certain thing because it's scared of being in pain. If you do something like that, you're genuinely sick and you do not deserve to have any animals in your life whatsoever. And people do believe that Gregory did this himself. And I'm not 100% too sure if he did this, but based on his treatment of his animals in the past, I wouldn't be shocked. And then we move on to yet again, even more animal mistreatment of Onision killed a deer. And okay, ladies and gentlemen, to be fair, this one wasn't as bad as all of the other ones. This was uh, Gregory hit a deer when he was in his car, and he actually said that this really emotionally scarred him, and uh, there's honestly not, nothing more I can really say than that. I mean, to be fair, a lot of people out there have probably hit an animal with their car by accident sometimes, but I, I do think that the fact that this man attacked everybody, including his own audience, for eating meat, yet this man has just an absolutely horrific record when it comes to animals. It's it's just a, a very sweet taste, well, very grim taste of irony. Nice. She betrayed me. Now, honestly, I don't really know what this actually refers to. Actually, no, uh, I'm lying to you because I've done more research and now I actually know, I think, what this is about. Pretty much, I stumbled upon this random re-upload of a video titled She Betrayed Me, and yes, it's a video from Onision where, in this video, he seemingly goes back to his house that he had with Sky and goes back to, I guess, discover that pretty much half of the things in the house had gone because it was Sky's stuff and Sky had taken it away. Just things like general belongings, like Christmas decorations, even the cats, but actually not the cat's litter because somehow, I don't know how, but, but Pooh manages to come back in. I don't know how this keeps on coming up, but it does, because apparently uh, Sky didn't take the litter box and it, <laughs> it still had poop in it and Gregory wasn't happy with that, but let's stay. you don't need to lie to me, Greg. We, we, you don't need to lie to me. We know what you're doing with that later tonight, such I need to stop saying these things, but yeah, this video I think was Gregory just very angry that Sky had taken a lot of the things, and I think in this video he just wasn't happy with some of the things that Sky had taken. I feel like he saw it as an act of betrayal, and I'm I'm not really sure how you were living with Sky. Sky moved out. Sky took her things. It's a pretty normal process, but I think Greg was a bit angry because he thought that he owned some of the things that Sky took. I I I'm, I don't really know how this is really a betrayal. That's a pretty big word to use. To me, it was just, oh, well... Well, Sky moved out. To the next part, which is iDubs. Now, back in 2017, the content cop was 
banging. It was absolutely, oh, I felt weird saying banging like that. It was very popular. It was a series by iDubbbz where he seemingly did a big old dossier exposing a certain individual on this platform. And in 2017, he did do a content cop on Rice Gum in the dubbed Jake Paul content cop. And back then, after this came out, a lot of people were speculating, well, who's the next content cop going to be on? Is it going to be this person? Is it going to be this person? Now, most people kind of aimed their guessing game towards Gregory Onision. And I actually, myself, I believe, made multiple videos speaking about this. And also, a lot of other YouTubers out there guessed that Onision could possibly be the next content cop. In 2017, this was a very, very big theory. This was spoken about for a very, very long time, but it inevitably went nowhere. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things, I, I think that would be for the best because honestly a content cop would just make this guy popular more popular than he needed to be everybody already knows gregory is a bad person i <laughs> i don't think that an idubs needed to like expose his name to even more people which i guess you could say fraser aren't you doing that right now Maybe, but honestly, I feel like the only people that are going to watch this video are like deranged people in a desperate attempt of trying to find nostalgia based on their previous YouTube interests. Is that you? Maybe. But with that, let's continue away from iDoops and uh, get on to the next bit. Hit with uh, a fire extinguisher? Now, this is when we start to get into, once again, the family realms of Anision, because as I mentioned earlier, yes, Gregory was horribly mistreated by his parents and Gregory claims that in the past he was actually hit by his parents with a fire extinguisher which obviously would be a, a terrible thing if it happened and if so I'm, I'm sorry that happened chief but um in terms of family mistreatment it doesn't actually end there but this time it's Gregory causing the mistreatment with Gregory kissed his he kissed his blooming cousin because this man clearly has a thing for the smooches and uh rather than smooching shane dawson he went on to smooch his cousin and honestly i don't really know which one is worse because yeah i found a tweet out there where somebody said oh yes the cousin thing for sure you admitted in multiple videos that you kissed her in her sleep ah uh i up until this point i genuinely didn't realize it it, it, it was that bad I, I thought there may be consent there, but, uh, okay, yes, uh, let's continue to what Greg quoted this with. And Ision responded, saying, You guys really want to spend your night talking about someone kissing their cousin over 20 years ago? Please find a better use of your time. This is not constructive, nor is it mature. Well, Gregory, what also isn't mature or constructive is kissing your own family. Don't do that, Greg. That's regardless of if it was 20 years ago or not. That, that, that's still really weird, mate. That's, that's re and the fact that you didn't deny the, uh, the, the bit when they were asleep, uh, that, uh, oh, how do random crimes just keep slipping into things here? It, it's just amazing how so many crimes just randomly keep on appearing. But, um, with that, <laughs> let's get away from Greg smooching his cousin and get into the next bit. H.S. Anon. Now, this again is another part of the personal life of Gregory outside of the Onision YouTube channel because pretty much H.S. Anon was somebody claiming that they were actually a former classmate of Greg and even did an interview stating the things that Gregory did back in school. They pretty much said that Gregory was a bit of a quiet kid but seemingly eventually became a bit of a weirdo who did a lot of weird and creepy and strange things and just in general, they spoke about how Gregory just is everything that you could have expected even when Way back in school. This is probably the least shocking information that anybody could have ever provided us. So uh, with that, we move on to Gregory's uh, acting skills because as we discovered with his meltdown videos, Gregory seemingly has a little taste for acting and he also has a taste for skits because Gregory did a skit where he seemingly endgamed himself. And I couldn't find this skit and I think that's mainly because of YouTube TOS, which is quite ironic considering how much I'm also trying to get around TOS in this video. But uh, yeah, Gregory uh, he, he apparently, you know, endgamed himself in a skit and this is on the iceberg for some reason. Again, I don't really think this is the most insane thing that Gregory has ever done and I feel like it could be higher in the iceberg, but maybe it's some obscure knowledge that not many people knew about. But if there's one thing that YouTube don't like in terms of their TOS, it is fake accounts, impersonation, and that leads us to YouTube sock accounts. Now, pretty much, this is once again people alleging that Gregory Jackson likes to create fake accounts for himself, where he seemingly just defends himself on YouTube, and whilst again there is no proof of this, I think it again comes down to the belief that surely, like, no sane human being would create an account to 
defend Onision. Like, at the end of the day, I how do you even defend the bloke? Like, seriously, after everything, how? Like, how? Because if you are defending him, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to call the police on you. But talking of calling the police, we smoothly move in to 911 calls. Now, Gregory, he's a uh, he's a big lover of the police, and they're a big lover of him, apparently allegedly but yeah gregory at one point of time called the police he called 911 on a certain human being chris <laughs> hansen yes gregory uh, in in this video that chris uploaded himself which has a lot of views now seemingly was very upset that chris hansen was at his door and he called the police and said i'm being stalked by somebody and they're knocking on my door right now and i think the most hilarious thing <laughs> was him saying to the police officer oh I'm being stalked by Chris Hansen. That's not something I really want to shout out loud because if my neighbours hear that, they're going to get a little bit suspicious. But imagine if you said that to a police officer. That's what Gregory had to do. And I would have just loved the reaction of, of, of hearing this man is being stalked by the presenter of To Catch a Predator. I mean... Yeah, it's something that happened in the Gregory Law, and I, I don't really think this is one of Greg's proudest moments, and this does go back to 2020, where a lot of people out there thought that this was the end. This was Gregory finally getting caught, but uh, as we know, it, it, it didn't result in anything, which, given the next section, it's quite shocking. Because we move in to not changing a baby's diaper. And honestly, ladies and gentlemen, this is just another really, really weird moment of Greg. This was the moment of where... You just start to think, I, I say you just, we're like two hours in, you, you thought this a very long time ago, but you just thought, how are you a, a real person? Because pretty much Gregory said that he does not like changing baby's diapers because he sees it in a, in a, in a certain way, which I'm not going to describe fully for obvious reasons, but uh, Gregory sees changing the diaper in a, in a certain, certain way. And I am... Um, I'm going to move on from this very quickly because this does make me uncomfortable because I don't really see how any sane human being could think like this, but I think at this point we know that this guy certainly is not sane. The Einzige account. Now this is yet again another former classmate or friend of Gregory's coming out and saying that they did actually know Gregory and this actually goes all the way back to 2004. This goes back to Gregory's Ghost Hunting Association Club of where they said that they were I guess seemingly a part of this Ghost Hunting Club and said that Greg used to believe that he had superpowers and would actually ban people from his friendship group if they said that ghosts weren't real and he also says that even in 2010 greg had cult like behavior and it's genuinely so mad to me that posts like this go back to that long ago about greg being an absolute nutter that post came out when i was 13 years old greg has been doing this for so so long now I, I, and it's 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 like almost applaudable in a really messed up way of how consistent this guy is but yeah Let's move on to the next bit, which is violating Billy the Fridge. Now, I, I don't really know much about this. I think it was in reference to Gregory on a live stream dry humping YouTuber Billy the Fridge. And I, I, I don't know if this was like without consent. I don't know what the whole shtick is, if they were comfortable with this sort of behavior. But I guess people out there were very upset with this and just upset that Gregory was seemingly violating Billy the Fridge's boundaries. I don't know how their friendship goes because Billy the Fridge and Onision seemingly did know each other to an extent. I'm not 100%, but either way, I wouldn't be shocked if Gregory was outright violating some boundaries that he had with somebody because he just loves to do that. But with that, we move in ooh, to some bigger uh, controversies. Uh, Gregory says a very bad word. And pretty much, I think this is referencing to pretty much a situation where Gregory was calling out YouTubers such as iDubs and PewDiePie for saying a certain word. He was not happy that they said a certain word and Gregory made a lot of videos cancelling them for it, speaking about it, just saying how absolutely bad it was. But then a lot of the YouTube community were like, that's a bit hypocritical considering this and they made a load of compilation videos of 
Gregory seemingly saying that exact same word. And I guess this kind of moves into the other category of Gregory being this. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to combine the two together because, yeah, I, I, I don't really think there's any more I can say about this. Pretty much the community just saw his complaints about iDubs and PewDiePie and were like, well, well, you you are a complete hypocrite and are just using this sort of thing to your own advantage and for your own social benefit. But uh, yeah, let's move into the next bit, which is baby end gaming skits. Because yes, as we've worked out so far, Gregory absolutely loves acting and skits. And this is just yet again, another skit that I cannot find because Gregory, as I've said before, has outright purged so much of his content from the internet. But what I guess this is, is Gregory seemingly, I guess, um, took the life of like a fake baby in, in, in a video or some format and uh, it was like a funny skit back in the day and I think this is probably something that was slightly controversial but nobody given how much there is out there about this guy probably cares about that anymore but uh, yeah this is in the iceberg and okay our word prevention dot info. Now, this is one of the more odd things that Gregory has done. Pretty much, he created a website to assist women in not getting, well, you can probably work out what R word it means. This website was just him, as I said, giving advice, but the advice itself is written out in, in to me, it's just a very, very weird, condescending manner, and it, it just, I don't know, I, I get a, a very weird, almost mocking tone from this website. This was, yet again, another strange thing in the history of this man. He clearly has a habit of creating random websites just full of random stuff, and, and, and this one was him, I guess, trying to do a good deed, but it, it just came off as, honestly... A little bit creepy, a little bit condescending, and a little bit weird, and at the same time also a little bit victim blamey. And with all of this controversy that we've gone through in this entire iceberg, I think you can tell that YouTube probably aren't exactly happy with somebody like Onision on their platform. And I've said throughout this video, well, well why is he still on this platform? And I think it's more probably they don't want to get a lawsuit on their hands because whether we like it or not, Gregory hasn't technically gone to jail for certain crimes yet. And I I think if they removed him from the website for those certain crimes, Gregory may have a lawsuit case on his hands that he could definitely maybe win against Google. So I don't think that they would probably take direct action against him, but that doesn't mean they've taken no action because that moves us in to Tower Dog leaks. Now, Tower Dog is pretty much somebody who I guess claims to be somewhat of an associate with Google, and back in 2017, they posted a lot of screenshots and images stating that pretty much there had been secret meetings back in early 2017 about YouTubers like Leafy, Keemstar, and Onision, and pretty much Tower Dog said that YouTubers like this, including Onision, were going to get secretly and slowly phased out of the website by, I guess, pretty much taking them out of the algorithm. And you know, back in the day of 2017, I, I saw this and thought, this is probably, I mean, not true. This is probably just somebody chatting absolute codswallop. But honestly, when you think about it, Leafy is no longer on the platform. Onision definitely has been taken out of the YouTube algorithm for obvious reasons. And Keemstar also is seemingly very much affected by the YouTube algorithm. I, I don't care what anybody says. His views, given his sub rate, is, is not, in my opinion, that natural. So, I mean... Maybe this was actually a real thing. I'm not 100% too sure, but given how these things have seemingly actually happened, it is a little bit creepy to see nowadays, and maybe this is just YouTube method of getting people off their website legally. Rather than outright removing their accounts, they can just simply remove them from the algorithm, because that technically doesn't break any laws, and it just makes things a little bit easier for them financially, but also just in terms of appeasing ads. So yeah, maybe this did happen to Greg and maybe he does have some right to get angry, but honestly, no, <laughs> no, you don't, because look at all the things that we've gone through in this hell hole of an iceberg. And when I say go through hell, we have gone through hell, because ladies and gentlemen, we've actually gone through this entire section of the iceberg. And this definitely was far more creepier than the other things that we've gone through, and it shows a much more dark, I guess, uh, profile to who this guy is. I mean, pretty much every section does do that, but given some of the things here, it is very creepy. But ladies and gentlemen, it does not end there, because now we are on the final section, the part where 
things just get absolutely insane, dark, and creepy, and this is where I'm going to truly work my hardest to get around YouTube TOS. Ladies and gentlemen, and days and thems, <sighs> welcome to the Shadow Realm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is off. It's, it's getting serious right now, because yes, welcome to the Shadow Realm, the place where things just should not be explored. This is a place involving Onision, where honestly, you are going to, just, you're just going to live in absolute fear after some of the things that are just on this, uh, on this part of the iceberg. Now, this is certainly the smallest part, and I am eternally grateful, not only because this video is probably going to be three hours long, but also because... If, if there was, like, a lot of the content that is already in this, but even more, I, I would just be kind of terrified. And let's just get into the first thing, and that is your sleep powerless demon. Now, I think this is in reference to the actual image on this uh, iceberg. As you can see here, we have an, a, a manipulated image, which was originally an Eseon, and it has been kind of altered to look like your sleep powerless demon. But I also think this could be referring to the mental breakdown aspect of Onision, because in those videos, he does seem to be quite demonic in some aspects. And I think people are just mainly doing the little old meme that uh, Onision could definitely be your sleep powerless demon. And honestly, I feel like a lot of teenagers have probably seen this man at the end of their bed. <laughs> I can't say that. Illegal content on Discord of people of a certain certain age. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Discord is a terrible place, full of awful, terrible people, and honestly, Discord, just in general, should probably be shut down for just the benefit of humanity, and this sort of section on this iceberg is further evidence of that, because if you didn't know, over the years, Discord have been, I guess, subject to a lot of investigations, allegations, just involving how they deal with certain content, illegal content, involving people particularly below the age of 18, and it seems that Onision over the years has pretty much been accused of, I, I guess, being somebody who uses Discord in illegal ways, in particular with certain pieces of content of people below the ages of 18. And fellas, I am simply not going to Google anything to do with this subject. I, I, I have heard the things through the grapevine of, yes, this man uses Discord in, in, in ways to interact with his fans, and I don't know if there's any evidence to back this or truth behind it. There are some messages out there of Onision interacting with his fans in not ways like this section of the iceberg necessarily describes, but still in ways where you think, uh, why? Why are you interacting with fans in that way? And we actually will explore that later in this part of the iceberg, but uh, yeah, for obvious reasons, I'm, I'm not going to Google this subject because... I, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I wouldn't want to really be investigated by the FBI like the Onion Man, so uh, let's swiftly move on to the actual definition behind Onision. One divine community. So yes, what is this? Well, it's actually the explanation behind, as I just said, Onision. Oni stands for one, and Sion uh, apparently means a divine slash perfect community. And honestly, I, <laughs> I do I do find it a little bit concerning that Onision's seemingly sole goal based on this name, which is, you know, the whole persona and profile that he's used over the last decade, is, is to I guess, create a community based on what he sees as perfect. There was a man back, like, eight years ago who also tried to do the same. I, again, I probably shouldn't say something like that. But um, maybe there are familiar patterns between those two men. <laughs> I need to stop. I'm, 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 I've lost it. I have, I've, I've lost my mind, um, and I'm, I'm sorry about this, but yeah, One Divine Community is pretty much the explanation behind the actual name of Onision, and I guess it does kind of go into the whole Sekeska thing, because it, with that, I guess it was Onision creating something which would unite his followers under one... <laughs> one branch, one one religion, and create one divine community. Honestly, a lot of the things with Onision in this iceberg does seem to all eventually come back to the roots of Sekeska, and it does kind of make me worried that there is this massive cult that we possibly don't know about, which is all being ran by Onision. Has the Catholic Church been infiltrated by Sekeska? I mean, maybe one day we will find out. But with that, we then move on to the next bit, which involves Discord that I mentioned earlier, and that is Greg's... Greg's dad... Greg's dad... Well, let's just say, uh... Greg's dad likes diapers! Greg's... Greg's dad likes... <sighs> Greg's dad likes diapers. 
this is a real thing and we're just going to have to get through it. And I don't really want to explore this, but it, it once again involves Greg's parents and this time, as, as you can tell, diapers. Because yeah, over the years, Onision has basically sent messages to his fans just telling them that his dad seemingly loves to wear diapers. And he even went to the extent of, of actually proving this by linking a drive which shows images. And I, I'm, 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 I'm not going to show you the images because for one, I, I don't want this on my channel. So I'm going to describe to you what I have seen. It is very clearly... <laughs> Please, please, please. Uh, 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 I'm just let me let me compose myself. It's very clearly Gregory's uh, dad, Papa Onision, wearing diapers in all a multitude of different angles and, and situations and scenarios. And it wasn't like it was just a one-off thing. And Greg took it out of context. No, no, no. There is certainly a lot of diaper-based image. <laughs> with Greg, uh, Greg's dad, and Anision over the years has pretty much spread this information throughout his fan base, and I guess this is one of them things which I just mentioned earlier, which he has used his Discord for, to pretty much, I guess, get the truth out there about his dad. Not that only was his dad, you know, um, seemingly abusive, but also, well, I guess... He, he, he bloody loves diapers. So let's just move away from that and get onto something which honestly is almost just as bad, and that is the I'm going to destroy you tweet. Now sadly, ladies and gentlemen, what I think this refers to is the era of 2019, which you actually may remember, where Onision spent his days on social media tweeting at his followers just about, well, all of these things as you can see here. Now, yes, there is censors on these tweets, but um, you can kind of imagine what these tweets are about. He was uh, saying very provocative things, and um, honestly, I, I don't think society really should remember this. I think this is one thing that if we could go back in time, we should just make sure that the internet just got nuked at this period of time. Like, it, it, you know in South Park where they have the massive router that kind of controls everything? I like to believe that this is secretly a real thing. There is just one hub in real life to to, to control the entire internet. And if that is the case, we, we need to go back and we need to find that hub and destroy it. Because some of these tweets are <laughs> just so, so wrong for a, for a multitude of reasons. Like, if a regular person tweeted something like this, I'd still say, mate, you are an absolute freak. But when you are in the context of everything today, even the context of the diaper stuff before, I don't even know how that applies to it. Just, just add it all up into one big, big, big old splooge fest and you've got these tweets. And these tweets certainly do lead to some possible splooge fest. <laughs> And yes, this is the I'm going to destroy you arc of Onision. And, and thankfully, I think he's kind of stopped these tweets. Um, probably because the FBI said, mate, if you continue this, we are going to have to put you put you down. But um, yeah, let's move on to something absolutely horrific. And that is the R word crime. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not really too sure what this refers to, because based on everything, this could actually refer to a multitude of things. But for one, I think this could be a lot of people accusing Greg of being a R word ist. I'm sorry for having to say these words in, in, in peculiar ways. Again, TOS is an absolute and even then, I just had to sense what I just said. Basically, I can't say anything. But Onision over the years has been accused of a multiple amount of crimes, and I think this is one of them. But it could also be in reference to the fact that Gregory himself has actually called Sarah this. And honestly, it is quite sickening to see this, and it seems that over the last two years, Gregory has been, I guess, using this as a way to deflect from the things that he has done in his life and his criminal action, alleged criminal actions towards some of these people that have accused him of certain things. And it seems that Greg has seemingly tried to kind of like retcon um, the history of, of the universe. And part of that involves this thing here of where Gregory is actually accusing his accusers of absolutely horrific crimes. And you may be thinking, how is this guy, like, almost three hours into this video, still managing to get even worse? And honestly, I, I, I don't really know, but I think we do have a little bit of an explanation, a possible reasoning to why this man is the way he is, and that exists in the next part. Goodler. Now, this certainly is some wild and wacky Onision lore, because, ladies and gentlemen, this pretty much goes into the category and subject of demons. Because pretty much in the past, Onision said on his website that when he was 13 years old, he was visited by a spirit when him and his friends were playing with Ouija boards. And the spirit was called Goodler. And I don't know why, but I just kind of imagine the spirit just goes, 
gold. Lad. I don't know why that that just came to my head. I'm I'm losing it. Just a little little gold. Lad. Spoke to Onision, and uh, if you couldn't tell where we was leading to, this is. Good la. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing right now. My editor is probably watching this thinking he's he's cracks. He, and I've said that about four times now, but good la. Pretty much, Gudla was meant to be some evil demonic spirit that went into Anision's body 19 times, according to the Onion Man. And pretty much, I guess Greg is saying that Gudla may be responsible for why he is the way he is. And Gudla wasn't just dropped in like 2004. Even in 2017, Onision was speaking about Gudla, which honestly is just quite creepy. And to be fair, Onision being like possessed and haunted by a demonic spirit would kind of explain a lot that I've said throughout this, because I've said when looking back at Anision's past, it's strange that this man, over 20 years, has seemingly remained the exact same. In his older videos, he seemingly is still, like, a, a, a wacky bloke. The guy is just seemingly the exact same human being to who he was 15, 20 years ago, which honestly isn't very normal. I'm a different human being to who I was, like, yesterday, and I don't know about you, but I feel like that's a pretty normal thing. As humans, we change, we grow, we learn as influencers like to say in their apology videos. We, we actually do. And I think with Gregory, this is a strange, obscure, I guess, uh, instance of where somebody actually hasn't changed and maybe, maybe, maybe Goodla, Goodla is actually the explanation behind all of that because Greg said that, yes, this image right here, which we, again, referenced to previously, was actually a, a drawing that he did to kind of resemble what Goodla actually looks like. And it, it is quite terrifying. Like, I'm actually staring this, this little thing in the eyes right now, and it looks like it's looking at me, and I, I don't know, that's just the lack of sleep. But maybe Gould is coming to take us all. But yeah, that is a Paranormal Activity 72... <laughs> <laughs> the Onision edition. But I feel like a more scientific reasoning behind everything is more this one of Greg was horribly treated as a child. Because this is popping up again on the iceberg, which has been spoken about multiple times throughout this video at this point, so I don't really think I need to explain everything. As you know, Gregory had a, a very controversial past with his parents. They've both spoken about against each other, but Onision for years and years has documented the experiences that he had with his dad and his mum, and pretty much with, with like bad experiences when you are a child, it does shape you to who you are as a human being. It's not an excuse, it's just like a scientific that. You'll usually see that somebody is like, like a bully, right? A bully has typically actually been a victim of another bully in the past, but because of the trauma and everything, it usually just leads them into also being a, a bad person. Not all of the time, and again, it doesn't excuse you being a bully, but it's something that happens, and with Gregory, this could be something that happened with him. His previous experiences with his parents could have caused him to be a much uh, uh, worse person, controversial, criminal, I don't really know how to say it, but typically throughout history when you get a bad person, there is usually a, a reasoning, or at least like a stem to the issues, and that's controversial to say because people usually like to have the old, uh, old they're plain evil, and if you do want that reasoning, we can just go back to good, ah, I need to stop doing that. That sounds like something the puffer fish in Finding Nemo would say when he was doing his little chant, so I, I, I can confirm I am I am not the puffer fish from uh, Finding Nemo, but uh, yeah, what this kind of indicates is that Gregory either is the way he is because of his uh, terrible parents or alleged terrible parents, or even he was, you know, haunted and possessed by a demonic spirit. I'm going to allow you to go down to the comment section and comment one if you think it was because, you know, he was possessed by Gudla, it keeps changing, I sounded German then, or, or, or two if you think it was because, you know, he was horrifically treated by his parents, or three, maybe, maybe he's just a bell end. Comment one of those numbers down below or all free for our fun interactive experiences on the I Never channel. Then we move in to Greg is the long lost evil twin of Cre No, no, <laughs> no, 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 I have I've been here for far too long to speak about no, no, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I am, I'm, uh, there is one, there is one breaking point and that is the one. No, no, moving on. No, moving on. No. Two. Moving on to no. I'm saying it again. I'm not speaking about that. Moving on to Greg is treating Kai horrifically. Now, this, of course, is the allegation, like most of the allegations surrounding Onisi. Again, I have to say, I'm not covering that thing for the 50th time. But again, this is the allegation. I'm not doing it. 
Greg is treating Kai horrifically. It's an allegation he's faced throughout their uh, romantic relationship back, you know, to when Kai was a minor. But yeah, alas, this is an allegation that Onisu has faced that he is actually, I guess, seemingly treating Kai horrifically, just like Onisu has treated his previous partners. And, you know, th th there is a lot to kind of back this, including videos out there such as this of where Kai seemingly outright says certain things, but seemingly just denies them at the same time. And based on everything that we've seen, based on how this man, Onisu, has just had no good breakups. I, I really wouldn't be surprised if, yes, Onision is treating Kai horrifically, especially based on this fact that we've literally spoken about in this video how Onision literally cheated on Kai. So, um, yeah. With this, I don't really think this actually has to be this low down in the Shadow Realm, but for some reason it is. Because, you know, with everything, we've kind of discovered this right at the tip of the iceberg that, yeah, Gregory is horrific towards his partners. But with that, we then move in to another thing that Greg is a part of a secret online ring of illegal people. And I'm not going to again say the, the, the certain ring that Gregory is being accused of being a part of, but you can probably guess, you know, if you've been in, in this video for this long, you can probably guess what it's referring to. And seemingly this allegation stems from the fact that Gregory was exposed for having a shell company. And people saw this and thought, wow, this is really suspicious. Why does Onision have a company where he seemingly is the only employee? People thought this was, yeah, weird, because why would Onision need to have a company? And and it kind of led to some, I guess, speculation just based on everything that possibly Gregory has a, a ring where he uses this company for illegal practices. But ladies and gentlemen, as somebody who's experienced in, in the business world to a slight extent, I can tell you that this has a much more boring answer to the actual truth behind it. Basically, with this shell company that a lot of people are speculating about, I think it's more to the fact that Gregory created a company for himself because he wanted to do business expense things. Pretty much, if you didn't know, a lot of people out there who are self-employed create their own companies because they want to pay corporation tax and also pay personal tax. Because if you are making a lot of money based on an online business, you're going to have like, say, £100,000 coming in and that's going to be have to be in your personal tax. And you're going to have to pay like 40% tax on that 100k, whereas you could then, you know, actually have that money come into a company, and then you'd only have to pay like 18-20% corporation tax, and then you could pay yourself a certain amount where you're in the tax bracket of rather than 40%, but actually 20%. Yes, I'm now an accountant. I can see why it would come off as shady, but honestly, it, it's probably one of the more, if not the most normal <laughs> and regular thing that this guy did. And in fact, I'm kind of shocked that Gregory actually has a brain cell to the point of where he could think like this. I mean, fair enough, I guess, uh, Greg, um, but no, <laughs> as you can tell, the bloke, as far as I know, is not running a shady ring for illegal content or sales of illegal certain things. So with that, let's move on to actually something more horrific, and it goes back into the realms of poop. Because Greg apparently really loves poo, and I don't know how we keep getting on to... <laughs> Get it on to poo. We're like, this is the second last part of the iceberg. I, I, and we keep getting in to feast. I don't, I don't get it. I just, I just simply don't get it. But this is something which Gregory has been accused of. Of Greg seemingly just absolutely loves blooming Cleveland steamers. And <laughs> yes, after everything, would I be surprised? No, because it, it, genetics are a real thing, ladies and gentlemen. And based on the fact that, you know, Greg's dad seemingly loves diapers. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it went a step further with his son. And Greg seemingly loves big old poo. <laughs> Do I have a degree? I actually went to university and studied for years. I have a computer science degree, and this is what I'm talking about. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's get in to the final part of this iceberg, and that is November the 11th, 2026, the Poi Alp Massacre? And I think this is an absolutely perfect way to end this iceberg, because ladies and gentlemen, th th there is literally, as far as I know, no explanation for this. Like, I, I could not find a single thing out there to do with this. Pretty much, um, no, there there is nothing here. Absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna say that congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, you have made it to, we, we, have made it to the end 
of the iceberg. As you can tell, this entire thing was just a complete utter mess. We have pretty much gone through over a decade, almost two decades, of an entire internet archive history and encyclopedia behind this man. And honestly, you should just be genuinely ashamed. <laughs> like, if you've managed to sit through this whole video, you are honestly just as ill as I am. And God bloom and damn it. Congratulations. And with that, you should subscribe. You should like this video and, and give yourselves a pat on the back because, I mean, I, I don't know if what we can take from this. Like, seriously, I thought we'd come to some form of learning, but all I've just got in my mind right now is just Gregory rubbing brown stuff on his back. And that was, that began like two hours ago in this video. And for me, that was like a week ago. And I, I honestly, what, what do we even say? This was the Onision iceberg. Yeah, it, it's not a fun place. It's a disturbing place. And... I am so, so sad. Okay, I'm going to cut across here. I, I gave a very, like, unenergetic ending to the video because, to be honest with you, I was absolutely shattered. But I just want to say, like, as much as I like to insult you guys, thank you for thank you for watching this video. If any of you have actually gotten and watched this whole thing, like, completed the whole video, please comment below. Like, genuinely, please just let me know because that would uh, boost my ego quite a lot. And maybe I will start my own version of Sakeska. If there is anybody you want me to, or anything you want me to do an iceberg about in the future, please comment below. And if you see somebody commenting something you would like, like the comment because it is a good way of letting me know. Possibly DM me. Whatever you really want, just let me know in the comment sections. It's, it's, it's just a good way to kind of allow me to understand whatever you guys want. But yeah, that is the ending of this big old stinky iceberg. It truly has been an absolute mess of an investigation. I genuinely don't feel like I've come out of this with any knowledge that has actually contributed to my life in any positive way. And in fact, I feel like a slightly worse person after finishing this video. <laughs> But also, ladies and gentlemen, now it's the end of the video, I do just want to quickly remind you that CyberGhost VPN are indeed sponsoring this video and helping me deliver this video to you, ladies and gents, so please click on the link in the description and get access to CyberGhost VPN by using the special discount CyberGhost VPN is granting to our channel users. Because it will not only protect your data, but it will also give you access to those blocked spicy websites which you cannot access in your country for just $2.03. You honestly are just getting a free, well, you're not getting a free product, but you're getting a really good product for a really good price. As I said earlier, it's totally risk-free, so why not? Help me out, but most importantly, help yourself out. The link is in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing more I can say than this has been the Onision Iceberg. Truly, truly, thank you for coming along to this massive venture. I don't know if I'll ever do a video longer than this. I didn't expect it to be this long. I thought maybe an hour and a half, but it just kept getting longer and longer and longer. That's what she said. Thank you very much for coming along, and I'll see you in a lovely 25-minute video probably next week. Peace out, and have a cracking day. I'm going to go and sleep for about 40 years now. Thanks for coming along to this iceberg. I need to spend my time in better ways. Bye-bye.